three, a battle of the unbeatens early in the season, but a lot of hype, a big game. With Ward Hilliard, I'm Mark Burdick, and as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth here at the beautiful Pat Corrigan Field with the turf down below us, it should look great. There are no hills, but in this football game, <laughs> there will be hills that play a big part, won't there, Ward Hilliard? It'll Max be, Hill yeah. from Penn's Manor and Homer Center's Landon Hill. There'll be hills galore, that's true, Mark, and they're going to be keys to the game here. We'll, we'll be talking about that a little later on, but uh, what, a, what a wonderful atmosphere, uh, early season matchup. These teams very easily could be in the semis or finals of the district playoffs. They're that good, so I'm looking forward to this. We thank uh, everybody for tuning in on W. CCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. It is hot in the S&T Bank broadcast booth and we're scurrying around getting everything ready. These two teams, the 65th all-time meeting between the Wildcats and Comets. Homer Center owns a 43 and 21 edge. The Wildcats have won seven out of the last nine meetings. Both teams are 2-0. and In Penn's Manor's case, they haven't allowed a point. A 20 or 32 to nothing victory over Purchase Line. They followed that up last week with a 34 to nothing blanking of United Valley. That's impressive. After two weeks a season ago with virtually the same team because they lost only two seniors, they had given up 91 points. Homer Center 28 6 over United Valley in the opening week of the season. Last week it was 34 to 20 as they knocked off R River Valley in a score that really wasn't indicative, indicative of the type of game it was. Homer Centers had to battle injuries at the most important position on the field, that's the quarterback position, Ward. Yeah, you're down to your fourth team quarterback at, at times last week. And uh, you know, for, fortunately for the Wildcats, they had an offensive line that can help compensate for that. You don't want to get into that here tonight, though. You, you got Cole McAnulty back. I'm not looking for him to run as much as I know he would like to. But uh, he does make the passing game a much bigger threat. And that's going to be a key, I think, for Homer tonight. If you'd like to watch the game and you are listening right now and you're wondering how on earth do I watch it well it's easy with Renda Digital TV just go to WCCSradio.com and you'll find the link or you could go to YouTube.com and in the search engine type in Renda Digital TV that's R-E-N-D-A and you could become a subscriber it's free of charge and you can follow all of our high school games, everything is linked there. You can go back and watch other games, etc. Also, Indiana High School, a part of our Renda Digital TV network. Our digital producer in the booth is John Smathers. Our camera person is Justly Sharp from Homer Center on the far side of the booth. And, our, of course, our remote camera that we're looking into, Ward, is sweat uh, pours <laughs> off of us here. So... These two coaching staffs, before we go to our first break and we take a trip around the Heritage Conference with Jake Slobotnik, what a job, uh, you know, the continuity. Bill Packer, in his 18th season, 116 wins, 73 losses. Even Steven against Homer Center, 9-9 nine and nine record. What a job this staff has done. They, they're, I always said they're one of the best, if not the best, prepared staffs in the conference. They always are ready. Uh, I referenced coming out here, my son, when he was playing, they were able to bottle him up pretty well. They're going to try to do the same thing with Landon Hill here tonight, and they are prepped for that. So it will be interesting to see how that result turns out. Homer Center's Greg Page, 16th season, 107-62 and 62 record. Record, 634 winning percentage. You got it. Even Steven against Penn's Manor, 8-8, eight and eight, although Coach Page has had the better of it lately, as I mentioned, seven of the past nine. The one thing I'll say, differences in the staffs, Penn's Manor staff back intact again uh, with many of the uh, same coaches. Homer Center, Gene Raymond, we wish him well. He's been battling some illness, hoping to get back soon. Mike Arone has departed to become head coach at Derry. And Nick, or, uh, yeah, Nick, Raymond, Nick Raymond is yeah. the athletic director at Forest Hills now. Welcome aboard Eric Faust, great uh, coach uh, at many levels, including the collegiate level, to Homer Center staff. Yeah, the, and uh, that's a big boost. The, the, the other folks that were on the staff are, are back. They're taking different positions, as you noted, Mark. And uh, that, that's an adjustment. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I think by now, I think they're settling in pretty well, though. And hopefully that won't be a distraction here tonight. Again, on Renda Digital TV, just go to WCCSRadio.com. It's embedded. 
interested, you'll be able to click and play and uh, watch tonight's game as well. We're going to continue from the S&T Bank broadcast booth when we come back on our ITT pregame show. And coming up, you will hear from Penn's Manor head coach, Billy Packer, Homer Center Wildcat head coach, Greg Page. We'll look at the keys to the game, including from Penn's Manor's side, the Luigi's ingredients for success for the Comets. Well, if they continue to play great defense, that's a good start, isn't it? Very good. Ward will rejoin me when we come back as we continue our coverage. But first, thanks to our own Jake Slobotnik, we're going to take you on a trip around the Heritage Conference and give you tonight's matchups all over the place uh, with the five games in the Heritage Conference tonight. That and more when the ITT pregame show continues from Pat Corrigan Field right here on the Renda Media Football Network. I'm Jake Slobotnik with this week's trip around the Heritage Conference driven by Mark Arbuckle Nissan in Indiana. Our marquee matchup this week takes place in Penn's Manor, where the hosting Comets and the visiting Homer Center Wildcats put their undefeated streaks on the line for one night only. That game will be aired on WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160, video streamed on Renda Digital TV, presented by the Grayson Coral Sportsman's Club, airtime 615. Our U92 game of the week features a pair of teams struggling to catch momentum during the early parts of the season. On one side, it's the newly formed United Valley Lions. On the other, it's the West Shemokin Wolves. Todd Marino has the call on 92.5 FM, U92, and on U92radio.com beginning at 6.30. On Cat Country 106.3, Jess Hauser and his River Valley Panthers look to get into the win column against the Cambria Heights Highlanders. Chuck Clark and I have the call at 6.30. In Portage, the Mustangs look to bounce back after a 13-6 loss to Cambria Heights last week as they take on the Marion Center Stingers at home. And the final Heritage Conference matchup this week has two schools looking to continue their underdog success as the Purchase Line Red Dragons visit the Northern Cambria Colts. That's a look at this week's trip around the Heritage Conference driven by Mark Arbuckle Nissan in Indiana. Don't forget to check in on all four of our Renda Media Station's Facebook pages for scoring updates and game recaps posted later tonight. I'm Jake Slobodnik, and I'll see you next week. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. Show. Ward, I mentioned Penn's Manor after uh, losing nine starters from their 2020 playoff team. Comets returned nine starters this year when boy it shows. They're, and they had some injuries last year too. Uh, but Justin Marshall, I think one of the young men that was injured, they have some outstanding skill people returning, led by quarterback Max Hill, Justin uh, Marshall. You have Corvina, the fullback Mark Bagley. Homer Center on the other side has returned six starters on both sides of the ball, a fairly experienced group. Yeah, both ways. Uh, again, you knew that the Comets weren't going to be down 
very long. You knew they were going to get the, the development that they needed and get back into the winning circle, and that's what they've done. And uh, it's a big test for them here tonight. I'm sure they're aware of that. Uh, the Wildcats, uh, I, again, they just, they're going to ride the wave. The one key, I think, for them is that they do have five offensive linemen all returning. Different positions, perhaps, but that's a big plus when you're talking about football at this level. I mentioned the significance of this game. Sometimes it can be overhyped, only week number three. But these two teams are expected to contend for the Heritage Conference Championship, get into the District 6 playoffs, and hopefully make a run. From the standpoint of how big this game is, really the winner of this game it's not a one-game lead over your opponent. It's really a two-game lead over your opponent because tiebreaker, of course, would be head-to-head, -head, right? Yeah. I, I, I really don't think anybody's going to go through the conference undefeated. That, that's my prediction. But I think it's there are some solid teams at the top, and uh, they're going to make themselves heard as, as the season progresses. So uh, I think at the end of the year, you may have the And in all four of their District 6 championship seasons, they've started at least 4-0 and in all four of them. So that's something from Homer Center's <laughs> side, if you believe uh, in you know history repeating itself, uh, that it's going to be very important. Penn's Manor, they're looking to make a statement. I think they've felt maybe a little bit disrespected with the preseason rankings and all of that. Uh, but they're uh, off to certainly a great start, no question, I think for both sides, it's an understatement to say it'll be their stiffest test. Thomas hosting the Wildcats. Wildcats' stiffest test, first road game here at Pat Corrigan Field. Mark, if you don't mind, I want, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, send my condolences along to the Murray family uh, and the death of Bernie Murray, a long lifetime booster member. Uh, they were great friends of the family. He and his wife, Monica, both have passed. Uh, just the, uh, the, the, the whole community needs to yep talked to pat build. yesterday certainly wish uh the murray family the best and the same thing i talked about coach's corner uh, uh, about mike gauncher i paid my respects last week at the mccabe roof funeral home talked to trisha and uh, mike gauncher longtime supporter of not only the red dragons very passionate about his job with pittsburgh brewing and loved life loved his family loved football really loved following what we do talked to him a lot diagnosed with cancer last December we lost him and he was uh, buried last uh, Saturday and we're going to miss you Mike yeah, and way I, too I have early. a feeling you're at the age of 50 you're, you're looking down watching uh, both the Red Dragons and the Comets and Wildcats tonight we're going to go to a break right now as we continue on our ITT pregame show we'll come back with Penn's Manor head coach Billy Packer after the break that'll be followed up by Greg Page as our ITT pregame show from Pat Corrigan Field continues after this on the Renda Media Football Network. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well-stocked. 
Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool or how about shuffleboard? What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. I'm Shannon Lipniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season, and when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. When your vehicle needs tended to, take it to Baroni's Auto Care. Baroni's Auto Care inspects, does minor repairs including brakes and exhausts, as well as oil changes and tune-ups. And if you're looking for tires, Baroni's Auto Care sells all brands. Baroni's Auto Care is currently accepting new customers. So when your vehicle needs inspected or repaired, take it to Baroni's Auto Care right off Route 56. Look for the sign in Brush Valley. My name is London, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right, London. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for five area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Welcome back to Pack Morgan Field as our ITT pregame show continues with Penn's Manor head coach, Bill Packer. And Bill, congratulations. You're off to a 2-0 and start. What a difference a year makes, right? Because it wasn't that way a year ago. We've come out. We've uh, played pretty good defense. Offensively, we've had some pretty big plays. and So far, it's been uh, pretty good. Uh, a year makes a difference. We have some, some nice seniors this year that have really stepped up and have shown a lot of progress. Tonight, the Homer Center Wildcats are here to face the Comets. They're 2-0, and but they've struggled with a lot of injuries and at the most critical position, quarterback. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here tonight. But you know, you either way, you have a big test in front of you, don't you? Oh, there's no doubt. You know, you don't like to see any any injuries from anybody. And, uh, you know, we're really hoping the McAnulty kid can get back and play because uh, what a great athlete he is. He's a senior, and you hate to see that. He's thick and strong. He, he's a big threat on running and also throwing the ball. And then, again, you know, you have Krajosik, uh, a kid that they want to get the ball in his hands a lot. You know, they're going to take a shot. Uh, every once in a while, they're going to take that long shot. Well, he has that nice speed, and, and they'll run him on the jet sweep. When that kid gets any open space, he's gone. Then you have that offensive line. It seems like those guys have been there forever. Taglietti, Benz, Sutrelli, uh, Dokos, and the other ones that I've missed there. But what a big, strong line they have up front, and that's really going to be a challenge for us. Uh, they have some nice size, speed, and they're, they're so athletic up front that they just uh, can double you and get to your linebacker. So that makes it tough. Well, one of the themes of the night will be heel versus heel, right? Talk about your guy. Uh, he's doing it on both sides of the ball. Max Hill, your quarterback, and Edge rusher and linebacker and on their side Landon Hill's been pretty impressive really shouldering things for Greg Page while they fight through these injuries yeah no doubt well you know Max he's just been an incredible leader you know going into his fourth year starting at the quarterback now shows that great leadership Uh, he's been running the ball well we got to get our passing game going a little better he can throw the ball real nice it's just getting the guys open and getting the blocking for him to have some time to throw the ball he's just a very good athlete, and he's another kid that has that speed. If he can get out in the open, uh, he's one that's going to go for you, too. Uh, talking about Landon Hill, big back, lots of experience. Uh, not only big, but uh, has he has nice speed, and he hits that hole really quick. He has a great cutback vision of what we've seen on film. He cuts back, and he finds that hole. We're really concerned about him because uh, – He's so big. He can run you over, and not only run you over, he can beat you with his speed. So a great back right there. 
Bill, what would be the keys for you? What are you, you've been talking to your kids about, guys? We're going to really have to do this if we're going to come away with a win. Yeah, first of all, Mark, we've been having problems with penalties again. Uh, that's been a that's been bad for us last few years. Uh, we we get drives going and then we get a holding penalty or we do just something that's stupid, you know, and then we uh, lose that yardage. It's hard to get that back and. Uh, we haven't been able to finish drives off. We've had some big long runs for touchdowns, but we need to get long drives going, you know, finishing our drives. We have to sustain our block, and hopefully we can get these guys going a little bit But and throw the ball. We're going to have to have some completions just to keep uh, 11 guys out of the box. So that's key offensively. Defensively, hopefully we can tackle uh, a big back like Hill and McAnaldi. Uh That's going to be a key we tackle when we get 11 guys to them and we can somehow try to control our gaps and not leave these guys get into our linebackers. But that's going to be a big challenge for us. Coach, it should be a lot of fun. Going to be a beautiful night for football. As always, we appreciate you doing this, and we'll talk to you following the game as well. All right. Nice talking to you, Mark. Head coach Bill Packer of the Penns Manor Comets. We're going to come back and walk to the other sideline and visit with Homer Center Wildcat head coach Greg Page. That and more when the ITT pregame show continues to pack Oregon Field. You're listening and watching Homer Center Penns Manor football on WCCS and on Renda Digital TV presented by Indiana Regional Medical Center and the Grayson Coral Sportsman's Club. Back with Coach Page after this. I liked the one with the stained glass ship in the front door. You liked the one with the two-car garage. But then we found it, the one. It had a porch swing, a yard for our dog, a room for your office. Sure, it was 95 years old, but when we met with Amy at S&T Bank, she mentioned they had been around for over 115 years, and that made me feel better. Because even if we won't be here in 115 years, maybe our grandkids will be. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them, on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. Stadium lights are going out. The bleachers are empty. The reason? No officials. When fans are disrespectful to the calls on the field and those who make them, it is a hard position to fill. Show your support for your PIAA officials by demonstrating respect. Let's all work together so the game is great for everyone. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. 
he remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sales. Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Check them out on Facebook, Johnston Nursery Landscaping. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Pat Corrigan Field as our ITT pregame show rolls on. As, at, as promised, we have Homer Center Wildcat head coach Greg Page brought to you by Walbeck Insurance, Main Street in Homer City. You can visit them 24-7 online at walbeckinsurance.com. Coach, the good news is you're 2-0, and and the, that's the bottom line, and we're kind of in a bottom line business when you're a head coach, right? Yeah. And you, But you have been faced with lots of adversity at the game's most important position, and I'm sure all of the Wildcat fans and probably the Comet fans, too, are wondering what's the situation with Homer Center's quarterback, so let's hear it. Well, we're down to our sixth string quarterback. No, we're not. <laughs> One of our linemen was asking. I said, yeah, you can be seventh or eighth string. But uh, sometimes the last couple of weeks, it doesn't feel like we've been too far from that. Uh, we should have Cole McAnally back. He's been our starting quarterback uh, for tonight's game. And, um, and, of course, we'll have Riley Clevenger, too, who's uh, done well as a, in a backup role. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get some more consistency there and, and get a little more diversity with our offense. Unfortunate for your backup. Angelo Alexander uh, injured in the second quarter last week. He was really doing a fine job. And uh, uh, what's his status moving forward? Last week after the game, there was some thought that it might be long term. Uh, it's going to be a couple weeks, I think, is the word we just got uh, from Angelo and his family, which is really better news than what could have been. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I agree with you. I thought he did a nice job uh, being thrust into that situation, especially as a younger kid. Uh, but he wanted the ball. He wanted the responsibility. He did a nice job uh, until he got banged up there. So we just, you know, we hope he heals well. And, and then in a couple of weeks, we have another option there too. Coach, both teams are 2-0. and Been a good amount of hype for this game, I think. Is it too early in the season to call it a big game? I don't think it's ever too early in a high school football season. I think that's the beauty of it with nine or ten game seasons at a minimum. Uh, you know, you have to be ready to play every week. We tell our guys every week it's a big challenge. It doesn't matter what the record of the opponent is. I hope that we always understand and handle it that way because you only get one chance a week. We tell our guys that a lot. So this week happens to be the best team that we've played so far. We have a lot of respect for their program, their coaching staff, their kids. They're athletic. Uh, they're tough. They're, they're much better on defense than they were. It's going to be a tall task for us. I want to go back to the quarterback situation with the injuries because usually as you roll through, you know, maybe some summer workouts and then your scrimmage and then you're thrust into the regular season right away. Those first couple of weeks uh, I have found is when you have the most growth for a football team. Maybe the uh, playbook expands um, and kids are more comfortable. You're able to correct some mistakes that are made in weeks one and two. So with that in mind, how much has that hampered uh, where you would like to be as a football team as you enter tonight's big game? Well, I think the thing that, that really gets to you is when you have to go with who would be your third guy or even fourth guy in those game situations, especially early, they're not getting the reps that the first two guys get. Therefore, you can't really hone in on a lot of things, especially with the, you know, the more diverse running plays or a lot of the passing game. So what we've been trying to do, even – since the, the mid to late summer when we started working with Clev was let's just give him some basic things to look at in our concepts in the pass game. He knows the run game. He, even though he's a slot player, he's smart enough. He understands um, how everything works in those particular uh, movements with the offensive playbook. So you, you would like it. We do work on a lot of things, but I'm usually pretty uh, – I usually get uptight and, and don't want to bring a whole lot out, especially early, until we really perfect it in practice. All right, let's get to Penn's Manor in the two minutes we have left. I'm going to start on the de defensive side of the ball because when you look at a team that hasn't given up a point in two straight weeks, you have to be impressed with that. I am. I am. They have a lot of starters back, but I think they're very athletic. 
Uh, they moved to the ball well. They got tough kids. And again, it comes down to their, their system has been so consistent over the years, both sides of the ball, that it doesn't surprise me that they're playing that well. Offensively, they have a nice quarterback, Max Hill, that kind of leads their offense, but they have other skilled players too, don't they? Talk about uh, their, their wing T offense and how difficult it is to defend because they like to get numbers and outflank you if they can. Yeah, and Hill runs, Hill runs everything well. I think he can throw well. He likes to run. He's a tough kid. Uh, so you have to key on him more so between the tackles. They do some power read stuff. But Marshall and Corvina are good edge runners and so tough, and they have Bagley coming up the middle. Uh, they have a nice tight end that they sneak out and throw to with Carter Smith. So they really make you defend everywhere. And um, I think that's the thing that makes them diverse is they got tough athletic kids doing a lot of different things. Coach, finally, hard to believe, but the two teams have combined, I think. I don't even know if it's a total of 50 yards. I know 13 on your side with all of the quarterback injuries. Will that be a key for you tonight, maybe to get some uh, yardage through the air and to loosen things up? I would like to. Yeah, I, I think that's a key every week. I mean, you know, we do spread the ball out or spread the offense out by nature uh, these last few years, so we want people to defend, you know, the whole field. But at some point, it's going to have to come, and, and you know, hopefully, it's this week where we can open things up a little more. Greg, Greg, oh, try it again, Greg. Thanks for doing this, and we'll talk to you on the post game show as well. Thank you guys very much. Head coach Greg Page is always brought to you by Walbeck Insurance in Homer City. You can visit Walbeck Insurance online at Insurance. Com. Coming back with more from Pat Corrigan Field, Ward Hilliard will be rejoining me as we roll on on the ITT pregame show on WCCS and Renda Digital TV. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sale. Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Check them out on Facebook, Johnston Nursery Landscaping. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. I liked the one with the stained glass ship in the front door. You liked the one with the two-car garage. But then we found it, the one. It had a porch swing.
game brought to you by Luther Ford in Homer City, Indiana County's number one Ford dealer. And your home for the F-150 trucks. Ward, first for Homer Center, what do you have for keys to the game? Well, one of the keys, I think, Mark, is contain, contain, contain. They have got to bottle up that running game of the Comets, with especially Max Hill. Uh, they've got three quality running backs in that backfield, all veterans. And then you got Max Hill in the mix who can run, who can pass. They've got to control that. The second thing the Wildcats need to do is they've got to find ways to get Michael Krajosik the ball in the open field, whether it's flat passes or passes over the middle, short stuff. Let him use his skills. We said this last week, never touch the ball. So we need to get, Homer needs to get him the ball as far as that goes. And the, uh, the fourth, the third uh, key that I think they need to do is they need to be able to roll Cole McAnally back into this offense so that he could throw a few passes, get comfortable back there since he's returning, and then we'll go from there. There's Homer Center's keys. Let's segue now to the Luigi's ingredients for success for tonight uh, for the Comets, brought to you by Luigi's Restaurante, our good friend Lou Tate and Lou Jr., all the gang down there. We say thank you for sponsoring the Wildcats and the Comets. It's all about the great ingredients, and tonight for Penn's Manor, they're going to be challenged up front, I think, Ward, by Homer Center's experience line, so that's going to be a key, going to need to hold their ground on both sides of the ball, and the fast Penn's Manor offense, they're, need to, they're going to have to continue to do what they've done, create splash plays, and need to stay away from penalties. We heard Coach Packer yeah. talking about that, and of course, you could say this for both teams. You got to take care of the football. That's the main ingredients for success. Brought to you by Luigi's Restaurante. Maybe we'll pay a visit after the game. Lou, if you're listening or watching, we say thank you, Luigi's Restaurant, for your support of amateur athletics and tonight's Heritage Conference game. Coming back with the starting lineups for both teams when our ITT pregame show continues from Pat Corrigan Field right here on the Renda Media Football Network. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Hip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's jeweler. Looking for fun for the entire family? White Township Recreation is now the hub for all of your youth and adult recreation programming. Programming is now open online for registration. White Township Rec offers anything from art classes to gymnastics to bowling to boxing, fitness classes, and much, much more. For more information on public skating, including birthday parties and recreation programs, please visit whitetownshiprec.org. That's whitetownshiprec.org. See you at Public Skate, s and Bank Arena. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now, and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Plus, at Luther Ford, you'll save big during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. 
Hi, my name is London, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right, London. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for five area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com, an equal opportunity employer. Stadium lights are going out. The bleachers are empty. The reason? No officials. When fans are disrespectful to the calls on the field and those who make them, it is a hard position to fill. Show your support for your PIAA officials by demonstrating respect. Let's all work together so the game is great for everyone. I'm Shannon Lipniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance... The Comets and the Wildcats. For the Comets, tight end will be Carter Smith, the junior, 6 foot 188. Left tackle, Peyton Koshko. He's a junior, 5'10", 222. Left guard, Brighton Gillen, a junior, 6 foot 165. Nick Raphael is the center senior, 5'10", 270. Alec Palenik is the right guard, sophomore, 6 foot 210. Jacob Tate, the right tackle, junior, 6'4", 303. And the wideout on that side is Eric Baum. A senior, 5'10", 165. In the backfield, one of the white wingbacks will be Ashton Carvina. He's a senior, 5'10", 165. He is a senior, 5'10", 185. Justin Marshall, he's a good one. A other wingback, 5'11", 170. And, of course, quarterbacking is Max Hill, the senior, 6'1", 195. For the Wildcats, let me flip my chart here. Tight end will be Mason Bell. He's a senior, 6'3", 215. Left tackle, Isaiah Bentz, senior, 6'5", 298. The left guard is Romulo Dokas. He is a senior, 6'1", 233. Center, Joe Succiarelli. He is a senior, 6'1", 189. Right guard, Vinny Tagliati, a senior, 5'11", 239. Right tackle, Aiden Bikina. Senior, six foot, 237. The wideouts on the right side, Riley Clevenger. He is a senior, 5'10", 168. In the backfield, be quarterback Cole McAnoldy. The senior, 5'10", 203. The running back there will be Landon Hill, a junior, 6'1", 226. The wideouts, you'll have Michael Krajosik, senior, 5'11", 183. And you'll see Braden Dunn also in there. He is a sophomore, 5'10", 161. That about covers the starters, Mark. Starting lineups brought to you by Maine's Chiropractic, adjusting today for a better tomorrow. At IRMC at Chestnut Ridge and Blairsville's Urgicare, they fast track you for quick access to their team of medical experts. Highly trained and ready to treat all minor injuries and illnesses, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge offers the full spectrum of Urgicare seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Old Route 22 in Blairsville. Get in, get out, get better. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is a part of the IRMC family. Better health Health, better life. Fans, that's the ITT halftime report. Or a pregame show, I should say. I'm getting ahead of myself. So many things going on in this booth. The captains are at midfield, quad captains for both teams. Homer Center, we believe Penn's Manor won the toss, deferred. They do this actually 20 minutes, 30 minutes ago, and they reenact it, if you will. We'll see if that's the case when we return for the start of tonight's game. The 65th all-time meeting between the Comets and the Wildcats is coming up on the other side of this break, right here on the Renda Media Football Network. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them, on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. 
You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. to WCCS and Renda Digital TV. Our spotter in the booth is Dennis Mester. Our statistician, Jerry Rossi. Jerry, actually, we could have John through the magic of this remote camera. Well, you better not, right? <laughs> you have a better face for radio. But our statistician, he has his own sponsor, Jerry Rossi, First Commonwealth Bank Quick Stats, all night long. With Ward Hilliard, I'm Mark Burdick. Our Executive producer on the Wildcat radio side is Michael Burdick. Our producer on the video side, we can't say executive, it's John Smathers because he wants a raise, if we use that word, attached to his title. <laughs> Kicking off will be Justin Marshall, back deep, Michael Krajosik, and Braden Dunn on this gorgeous night for football. And the 65th all-time meeting is underway. Floating kick taken by Krajosik at the 22. Right hash to the right sideline, runs through a tackle, spins his way over the 45, up to the 47-yard line. On the tackle, Carter Smith. Ward Hilliard, you're gonna hear number seven's name called a lot tonight. Carter Smith is an outstanding football player. Watching some video this week, I was really impressed on both sides of the ball. Yeah, you're gonna see some very talented players on that defense and uh, you know Homer will need but they, they've got excellent field position here Mark almost the four down territory yeah, they get one first down they're gonna be in four down territory and we'll see how they attack here 26 yard return for Krajosik ball on the right hash they operate operate right to left as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast window and they give up the middle to Hill who darts his way into Comet territory for four yards from 148 to the other Carter Smith right on cue on that tackle let's tell you about the Wildcats offense of course the Wildcats and Comets are both 2-0 and Homer Center averaging 31 points a game 280.5 yards rushing per game Unbelievable, only six and a half yards passing per game due to all the quarterback injuries. Trips near side, and now they reposition tight end Mason Bell, tight end left. Side card to the right of Cole is Hill, and Cole wants to pass. He has Clevenger wide open down the middle, and it's incomplete. If it's on target, it's six points as he got behind the Comets, Adam Altimus and Justin Marshall. Yeah, you know, that was a problem early in the year for uh, Cole. He was overthrowing his, his receivers on those deep patterns and, of course, missing the entire game and then a lot down. of practice. Just that wasn't able to connect on that long one. Third down and six now for Homer Center. Wide side of the field, near side toward our press box location. Relationship banking, one customer at a time, S&T Bank. Harper, Casey Harper, comes near side to the left boundary. They have dubs both ways. Motion man is Krajosik. They fake the jet, and Cole's going to keep it. He's hit and thrown back at the line of scrimmage. And Carter Smith, again, read that, stayed home. A little slow developing, a little hesitancy on the part of Cole McAnally. Yeah, I thought Homer might have even jumped a little in the backfield, but uh, they're going to need to punt the ball here. Brings a fourth down. Good job by the Comet D. They gave up terrific field position on that kick return, but uh, they stood fast. Number one, Max Hill back to receive. Max Hill back deep to receive Michael the punt Krajosek. of Michael Krajosik, who's punted seven times for 30 yards. He drops it, but gets an end over end kick away. Hill takes it at the 19 yard line, flag flies, and Hill is tackled as he gets to the 30 yard line by Braden Dunn downfield. And we'll see what this penalty is all about. While they sort the penalty out, we're gonna pause for 30 seconds on an IRMC High School Sports Night on Renda Digital TV and the WCCS Football Network. Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sales. 
Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Check them out on Facebook, Johnston Nursery Landscape. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform comp. Third line, where Max Hill goes under his center, Nick Raphael, and he's going to keep it around the left end, and he's trying to get running room, and he does down the left sideline. Only man that can catch him is is Michael Perjosic, and he flings him down after a big gain into Homer Center territory to the 46-yard line. That'll be a gain of 34 yards on the game's first play for Penn's Manor. Yeah, Coach Packer upset with penalties in the last couple games, but uh, in this case, they got to the edge, and you know how big I am on those defensive ends. You cannot allow the corners. You can't allow them to get to the edges, and that's what Max Hill did. The only guy with any speed to cut, catch him was Michael Krajosiker. That's six. Yeah, absolutely. Near side receivers, Mark Bagley. They have a wingman to the right in Justin Marshall, and they give it up the middle to Corvina. And Corvina yeah, stood up and pushed here. back after about a one, maybe two yard gain to Homer Center's 44 yard line. On the stop, Benny Taglietti for Homer Center. I'm sure Coach Packer and his staff are looking at ways to get to the edge. They think they can beat Homer defensive ends, and uh, if they can, they're going to have great success here tonight. That's what they do best. They try to outflank you and outnumber you. Yep. It's and they did on that first play. Carter Smith, tight end on the left side. They have Ashton Corvina, who's rushed for 110 yards, wing left. Now they split the tight end Smith off the line of scrimmage, and Homer Center jumped, and they're going to blow it dead, and that'll be a five-yard mark off on Homer Center as jumping the gun was Aiden Bikina. Beautiful night for football here. Offside, Homer Center will march it to the 41-yard line. Penn's Manor's Billy Packer, 17-plus seasons for the coach. He has 118 wins. Second and Coach four. Greg Page, 107 wins in 15 plus seasons. The 39. They've combined for 225 wins. They're both averaging about seven wins a season, which is pretty remarkable. They both got a district championship in their pocket too, which. Uh, yeah, Coach Page actually has two. He has two. They're going to give on the jet around the left side and with running room dancing around and short yardage. Going to be stopped short of the first down. That's Justin Marshall for Homer Center. It was Aiden Bikina on the stop. Marshall, 15 rushes, 235 yards, a 15.7 average, two touchdowns to his credit. And Wildcats, Bikina stops him two yards shy of that lead chain, so it'll be third down and two. Smith, receiver to the right, double wing. Max Hill goes under center. Hill turns and gives it to Corvina. It's clogged up, and the Wildcats are going to tackle him for a loss back to the 40-yard line. Great job, great penetration. Again, Bikina for Homer Center, along with Vinny Taglietti. That was really the push up front from Homer Center that blew that play Yeah, up. Clevenger did a nice job of coming in and sealing too. And uh, that's what you got to do on those sweeps. You got to pin them up, force them inside. That's where the strength fourth is. Four. Loss of a yard, so it'll be fourth down and three to go for the Comets. Football at the 39 of Homer Center. They need to get to the 36 yard line. Picking Max Hill, 28 rushes, 263 yards, now over 300 with that first run of the game. They come out with split backs, strong right. And Hill, student body right, trying to get to the edge, cuts it up, reads it beautifully, and has a first down to the Wildcat 30. Homer Center had bodies there, but they couldn't quite get to him. And I think it was Hill's ability to read that play and he made that yardage that he needed plus some. Just looked for a little cracker, didn't he? He did a nice job using his blockers, waited for a gap. Once he got it, he shot through it. Wildcats are going to have to react a lot better against Max when he does that. He is so quick, and he is fast. First down at the Wildcat 29. He'll go from the shotgun now with Bagley's sidecar to the right. 
and he looks to pass. Throws underneath. Smith bobbles it incomplete. He was open at the Wildcat 22-yard line. That's one that I'm sure Carter Smith, the junior tight end, would like to have back. Fortunately, it wasn't like West Virginia against Pitt when it went through the receiver's hands and caromed into a defensive back who returned it for touchdown in Pitt's case. Casey Harper was on the coverage. Yeah, good job by Casey, but uh, again, a pass that uh, should have been completed. Receiver <laughs> to the left boundary for the Comets is Amin Lieb. Carter Smith also out there, and Hill looking to pass, pressure up the middle. Hill breaks the pressure, makes a little move, and Landon Hill forces him out of bounds at about the 26 or seven yard line. It'll be a short gain. Sets up third down and long. Wildcats had a crack at him as we look on the replay. Mason Bell missed him. And then Landon Hill, good uh, tackle Third to get him out of bounds. Six. It said my key was contained, and that, you know that didn't happen that time. When Mason got in there a little too anxious, and he let that Max type of offense Hill get around him. They want you to over pursue at times, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they? They're looking for gaps. They're looking Third for down. lanes. If you make a mistake, they're going to get them. Ashton Corvina in the backfield, twins to the left, and Hill looking to pass. Pressure coming up the middle, and they have him. They sack him back beyond the 30-yard line. Caleb Palmer, Vinny Taglietti, and also Isaiah Bentz. Landon Hill also Landon Hill in there from his DN position. So that's going to be a loss back to the 30-yard line. He wanted to go deep, Max did, but uh, was well covered, so... Uh, couldn't do much there. Right on the 30 yard line. Well, Homer Center now forces Penn's Manor behind the sticks. It's fourth down and 11. Receiver to the left toward the Homer Center bench is Justin Marshall. Near side, Corvina and Lieb. Pressure again up the middle. Dancing, throwing deep toward Marshall. Going to be underthrown, incomplete. And the Wildcats are going to hold off. Penn's Manor with 6.44 to play in the first half. I don't think first that ball was tipped, but it sure looked like he kind of twisted his wrist when he threw it. It kind of was going end over end. It just didn't have anything on it. So That was an ISO play for the Comets there. They were going one on one. Big sack really killed that drive. Yes, it did. So Homer Center with 6.44 to play. In the first, we'll take over. First and ten. Again, I, I, you know, we said one of the keys was to get Krajosic the ball. It, and the way to do that, I think, is just the outs, the short outs. Absolutely. They're giving them, they're giving them a cushion now of five yards. So they need to look to do that if he's going to get any chance to make some yardage after he's, the catch. He's split wide right on the far hash, and they give it to Hill, and Hill smothered. Somebody got beat as Mac, Mark Bagley busted through the defensive end. We'll see the replay here. Here he is on the left as we look at our video monitor in the booth. Did he even get blocked? He did not. Came completely clean. Yeah, he did. Don't you think these comments were prepped for a dose of Landon Hill, and they did a nice job of reading that time and attacking. He, he's going to have to deal with seven seven guys after him here. Landon Hill, 46 rushes, 295 yards, seven touchdowns to his credit. Last year, 853 yards. In uh, tandem with Colin Troop, who graduated with 1,200 yards. Second down and 12, back at the 28-yard line. And McAnaldi takes the direct snap, throwing deep. For Krajosic and airs it out, overshoots him by again five yards. I just don't understand, Ward, and I know fans are going to get sick of me saying it, why they are so in love with the deep ball and they don't throw underneath. And, and you know, the Comets know that uh, the Krajoski can run those streaks and they're covering it pretty well, but if he just breaks downfield, breaks off the route and cuts across the field, little square in, he would be wide open. And that, then he could get yards after catch, which is something he does very well. Part of the philosophy is to run those deep patterns to loosen things up underneath. But then if that's the goal, then you have to actually do it and try it. Third down and 12, pressure coming from the edge. They set up the screen, and it's incomplete. And I don't see a receiver. I guess Hill was Hill in the was neighborhood. Hill was supposed to be out there. Nice job by the Comets of Carter in there on him. Coming off the edge. I mean, that's a screen you're supposed to let him through, but maybe not that fast. <laughs> yep. So the Wildcats are going to go three and out. 
We will have immediate timeout after this punt. Max Hill stands at his own 38-yard line. Krajosik stands at his own 15 long snappers, Dan Jones. Sailed one over Krajosik's head last week, but this is a good, strong snap and a good, good floating kick. Max Hill up to the 23-yard line, and he lets it go. Did he touch it? Dan Jones is going to try to pick it up, and it's Grohl's dead at the two-yard line. And I guess he didn't touch it, but 5.32 remaining, a long punt. A 76-yard punt. We have a media timeout. We do have a replay, and we'll see Max Hill, and he uh, does not touch it. Media timeout on the field with 5.32 to play in the first quarter. IRMC High School Sports Night coverage continues on WCCS and on Renda Digital TV, presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. Back in a minute. Boy, he did lace the... At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. Punt. That flips the field, doesn't it, Ward? Oh, but you know, punt return 101, Mark. You heard me preach this all the time. You got to catch the ball. Even if it hit, Max had an opportunity to catch it and drop if he needed to. But he let it roll, and this is the result. Goes from the shotgun out of his own end zone and puts Corvina in motion, but he wants to keep it, and he's going to be thrown down right near the line of scrimmage. Not a lot of running room there. Landon Hill, among others, for Homer Center on that tackle. 520 scoreless first quarter. They um, give him a gain of a yard to the three yard line. Ashton Corvina checks in to the Comets huddle. They're averaging 33 points a game, 365 yards rushing, just 18 yards a game passing, 383 yards a game overall. They've been dynamic on both sides to start this season with back-to-back -back shutouts. Bagley, a protector to the right of Hill, who is going to run a quarterback draw and not get much. The Wildcats try to pull him down, and did they strip the ball? Homer Center has it. They stripped it from Mac, Max Hill. And the Wildcats are going to be first and goal. We'll have to get a replay on this if we can. Yeah, see who may have stripped that. Uh, I was just going to say they're not going to have much success up the middle. Isaiah Bentz was in there. It might have been Romy Dokos that stripped it. He doesn't have it, but he reached in there. And it's actually Riley Clevenger who stripped that football or at least came up with it. Just moving and grooving. Yeah, that's what he that's said. That's what right? told me last week. I'm just moving and grooving out there. So the Wildcats <laughs> at the Comet five-yard line. Cole McAnulty going to go under center. And he turns and hands to Hill. Hill cut back inside that five down to about the two-yard line, I believe. On the tackle for the Penns Manor Comets. It was Amin Lieb, inside linebacker. They're going to put him down at about the one, so a gain of four. Good solid gain there, but nice gap control by the Comets, but Hill's such a good runner, he was able to pick up yardage. Joe Sucharelli, senior center, 
Cole McAnally under center gives to Hill. Hill sidesteps his way into the end zone for a homer center touchdown from a yard out. His eighth of the season, sixth consecutive score overall for Hill for Homer Center. And the Wildcats lead six to nothing. They take advantage of the short field and the strip fumble, and it's six nothing Wildcats. Wow, what a turnaround, all set up by that 70-yard yeah, punt. These big games, you make big mistakes. That's what turns them, and that was a big mistake. Wildcats capitalized. Michael Krajosik to attempt the extra point. Krajosik out of the hold of Clevenger. Snap a little bit low. It's put down, and the kick is blocked and hits the upright. I think getting a piece of it was Carter Smith, but the Wildcats leave a point on so off of the board there, and it's 6 to nothing. To We're going to come back with a Wildcat kickoff on an Indiana zero. Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night. Homer Center leads 6 to nothing. Also on Renda Digital TV, presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. It's the Comets and the Wildcats on the Renda Media Football Network. This is your state representative, Jim Struzzi, and I'm asking for your vote this November. The last couple of years have been something we could never have imagined, and now we are getting back to normal, and nothing is more normal than Friday night football. I want to wish all our area athletes, band members, cheerleaders, and all who participate the best of luck for a safe, successful, and fun-filled season. These games wouldn't happen without the support of the community, and I will continue to work hard for you and your families in Indiana County. Me and my staff wish you good luck, and I'll be rooting for each and every one of you, and I hope that you'll be rooting for me this November. That's have kicked off already, and it was returned, and we have a penalty flag on the play. The return foul, from Troy mask. Williams, and it's uh, going to be personal foul face mask on Homer Center. So that'll march the Comets up near midfield, W.A. Yeah, that's the kick Homer wanted right there, somewhere past the 40-yard line, so it wouldn't be much of a return. They had it covered well, but they didn't tackle well, and Billy Packer gets one back. He's having trouble with penalties. That's a problem for the Wildcats right there. So they're going to march it into Homer Center. On the Homer Center 49. Territory. Play fake what? something wide, I think. Ball on the right hash. Motion man, deep motion, and the pitch to Corvina. The Wildcats try stringing it out. They limit him to a one-yard gain. And Michael Krajosik, a flag flies. Are they going to say that was out of bounds, Ward? Yeah, I think it was unnecessary roughness. Uh, Let's see the replay. Corvina comes near side, and Krajosik has him and throws him out. And I'm not sure what the penalty was. I think they're going to call that a personal foul, unnecessary roughness. You got to. If he doesn't throw him toward the bench, that probably doesn't happen. 15 yard penalty. First down for the Comets. First and 10 on the 31. You know, but that's the way they call the game, so you just have to deal with that. So the ball to the 31. Homer Center, 30 yards in penalties. Back to back. Plays. Trying to get outside and not going anywhere is Justin Marshall. He's going to lose yardage back to the 36-yard line, a loss of five. The referee is Lou Idzotic. What a great guy Lou is. Been doing it a long time. Aiden Bikina on that tackle for Homer Center. The umpire, mm, Randy Sell. Linesman, Lynn Bordis. Line judge, Ray Powell. Field judge is Keith Fry. Side judge is John Blake. I think that might have been Vince that made that play, but uh, I would never dispute. Our spotter, Dennis Messmer. Second down and 15, Amin Lieb and Carter Smith receivers to the right. And a flag on the play. Here comes Max Hill. Max down the right sideline to the 25, 20, 15, 10 touchdown, but there's two flags. Yeah, it was motion on the split end. He moved. And he here's the... 
the replay, but we're going to see the run. Hold on three. And we have a hold as well, Dennis Mester, our spotter, saying that. So we'll sort it out here with 3.06 remaining in the first quarter. Homer Center leading 6 to nothing. Jerry, you have to take care of our Mistretta meter. So from the spot of the foul, it looks like it will be at the from the 38, and they will mark it back to the 48-yard line. Illegal motion is declined. Illegal motion is declined. And holding Second is accepted. Is holding call. So the Comets receive it, and they give back. Uh, again, Coach Packer cannot be happy with this. We he talked about it the pregame, and here it is cropping up again. Not only did they have a motion penalty, which destroyed that play, but then they top it off with a hold and give Homer an opportunity to move it back another 10. Second and 27. Wow. That was great field position. Now it's second and 27. Strange game sometimes. Motion man as they run a Wildcat with Marshall. And Marshall, right side, Marshall. right down below our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Short yardage from the 48-yard line to about the 43 for a gain of five. Riley Clevenger on the tackle. Third down. Comets have run some isos with uh, their wideouts trying to beat the Homer's corners, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised they might see one right here. On the 43. Third down, 22. Ball at the 43 of Homer Center. Mean Lieb, receiver to the right. Far side, Justin Marshall. He has one reception this year. Neither team's been able to throw the football so far out of the gate. Hill looking, he's going to throw, has a wheel route and wide open with the football. Stop and go maneuver is Corvina. First down to the Wildcat 15-yard line. Wildcats got beat. Little wheel route there. And he got in no man's land and was wide open between Hill and the Wildcats secondary. Somebody blew an assignment and they pick up big yardage. 28 yards. Yeah, you're right, Mark. They ran a streak downfield, but uh, they Corvina just kind of looped out into that open area where nobody was home and uh, easy completion. So the Comets are in the red zone. At the Wildcat 15 and Max Hill takes the direct snap. He wants to keep it to the 10 yard line and Max gonna be tackled right about the 10 by here. Riley Clevenger and by number two Clevenger. also Jackson Arone in there. And That's number 22 a gain of five, it'll be second down and five. The, Comets, and five for the Comets inside the 10, the 10 yard line with 140 to play here. That's a positive gain, five yards on first down. Six nothing Homer Center, but the Comets that close to tying the game up and maybe taking the lead with the extra point. They come out with a mean Lieb. They have a bunch formation to the right. Smith, Lieb, and Corvina. And Marshall takes the direct snap, cuts it back, and he's knifed down after a gain of a yard. I think that's all to the nine yard line. Caleb Palmer did a nice job making that tackle. And it'll be third down and short for the Comets. Nice job by Palmer there. He did not get Palmer sucked in. Was able to make the read and then the tackle. Third down, big. Third and four on the eight. Football at about the eight yard line, just inside the nine. They need to get to the five for a first down. They send Mark Bagley to the left boundary, Amin Lieb to the right. Wingman right is Justin Marshall to the left Corvina as Hill goes under center. Motion man, and they give it to Corvina. They clog it up and might tap one for a loss. I think they do. Back to the 10 yard line. Isaiah Bentz, Caleb Palmer again, and Vinny Taglietti. And it's gonna be fourth down for the Comets. Back to about the 10 yard line. It's well defended there by that side of the line there. They just poured in, just stuffed that play. We're down to 12 seconds. We will not get off another play. It'll be a big fourth down as we start the second quarter. Thanks to friends of Jim Struzzi for presenting the first. IRMC High School Sports Night coverage continues on WCCS and on Renda Digital TV presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. 65th all-time meeting. Homer Center six. Comets nothing after one. Big play to start the second on the Renda Media Football Network. Hi. 
Hi, my name is London, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right, London. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for five area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com, an equal opportunity employer. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. The great motion, and Hill rolls to his right, looking. They pressure him. He rolls to his left. He dumps it off to Smith, takes it at the 10 5. Touchdown, Penn's Manor Comets. Excellent job by Max Hill, who has his first touchdown pass of the season, and we are knotted up at six as they converted that big fourth down play. Homer chased him to the right. He just reversed field. Just too hard to catch, and uh, give Smith credit. He just flipped out into the flat, wide open, gave him a target, and he just shot-pointed it to him. Nice play, Max Hill. Was that, Jerry, a 10-yard touchdown? Nine-yard touchdown pass. Marshall going to attempt the extra point. Marshall to attempt the extra point. The holder is Troy Williams, long snapper, Carter Smith. Snap is good, and the kick is up, and the kick looks good, and it is good. And the Comets, kick is good. big fourth down conversion to start the second quarter, nine seconds in. They now have the lead. It's Penn's Manor 7, Homer Center 6. We'll have a Penn's Manor kickoff when we return on an IRMC High School Sports Night on WCCS, Renda Digital TV, presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on the Renda Media Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. He's 49 yards, 4 minutes, 12 seconds. Comets picked up a couple of first downs along the way and a big fourth down conversion. <laughs> Marshall to kick away. Short squib kick coming near side. Wildcats will have to field it, and they do. Back at the 25-yard line, that is excellent placement by Marshall. I think that was by design and maybe something they saw on video because Logan Henry had to come in a hurry, Ward, or that was going to be a recovery for Penn's man. Yeah, there was nobody near it. It was kicked well, and it got a nice bounce also. It didn't, you know, sometimes they just take that hard left bounce and go out of bounds. That one did not. 
So the Wildcats are uh, deep out of 25 isn't so bad, but. Uh, Comets defense mentioned back-to-back -back goose eggs to start the season. They gave up 91 points in their first two games last year. They've allowed just 96 yards rushing per game and 53 yards passing, just a buck 49 overall. Wildcats with twins near side, Landon Hill, Sidecar to the left of senior quarterback Cole McAnaldi, who returns after sitting out. And there's a fumble, and Krajosic on the jet sweep jumps on it, but he will lose two yards back at the 23 yard line. And the team wearing blue, they look like dog going after bone, but they couldn't quite get there. That would have been a huge turnover. Looked like a clean handoff, it just uh, was mishandled. Mishandled. Looking where you were going before you had the red. Krajosic, receiver to the right boundary as we look out of our S&T Bank broadcast booth, relationship banking one customer at a time. Hill with Clevenger in motion, and they fake it to Riley. Cole McAnaldi trips, maybe over his, over his center, Joe Succiarelli, perhaps, and gains two to the 25-yard line, but the Wildcats will be faced Stop with third down and 10. They're going to credit to tackle to 52, I think I heard Peyton Koshko, who's at nose guard. No, empty set for Homer Center. Cole McAnaldi boots to his right, backside pressure coming, floats it out there for Clevenger, and in no man's land, incomplete, as this Wildcat passing game is in complete disarray right now. Yeah, good pressure on Cole. He just had to get unload that more before he wanted to. Uh, again, not having the mobility of Max Hill, he has to improvise a little more with the pass. And uh, right now, Wildcats aren't getting people open. That's a credit to the D of Penn's Manor. We'll take a quick 30-second break after this timeout, or after this punt, I should say. Krajosic, with the help of a big roll, a 70-yarder on his last effort. Gunner on the right side for Homer Center is Will Jones. Snap is good, and Krajosic, good oh. high kick again, and it's returnable, and Hill takes it at the 38. Left sideline has a seam, 30, 20, and there's a flag down. It's gonna come back on another penalty. There, there was a couple blocks in the back in that return. <laughs> Punt covering. 37-yard punt. Max Hill is such a dynamic football player. Yeah, once he gets his shoulders turned, he's dangerous. He's fast, strong. His own player captured it. Seriously, his own didn't tackle him. He got blocked back. And he fell over and going down the side. So they'll mark it off. Looks like the spot of the foul is at the 42. Pushing the back on the so they'll back it up to the Comet 48. Comets will set up first and first. Some of the officials in the stands don't seem to agree with that call. Hmm? <laughs> that was, well, you could see the block. Yeah, we saw the replay. 10.25 to play. But here again. in the first half. Penn's Manor at their own 48 yard line. Carter Smith, receiver near side. Slot receivers, Justin Marshall. And Hill looking to pass, fires over the middle, actually out to Smith who was wide open. Forced out of bounds by Casey Harper. That was uh, like taking candy from a baby there, absolutely wide open at the 38 yard line of Homer Center. That'll be a gain of 14 yards. They may have found something in that Homer secondary. Their defense has really been pretty lax. Ball at the Wildcat 38, clock stopped as Smith was knocked out of bounds. In the backfield is Ashton Corvina repositions to the right of Max Hill. Max looking to pass again. Again to Smith through his hands. That's the second time he's falls incomplete. dropped one or let it go through Smith. his hands. They, I'm sure he's just uh, frustrated with himself. You can see it. He was wide open again second at about down. the Wildcat 30-yard line, and it just went through his hands. Krajosic coming up. 
on them. But uh, the That's Comets, they <laughs> now those are the type of pass plays I that I love. I was just going to say that, Mark. The very thing we've been talking about, they're doing with Kenton Pence Manor, and they're getting open. It's five, six, seven yards at a cop. That keeps your drive moving. Second down and 10 from the Wildcat 38 yard line. Carter Smith, again near boundary. Motion man is Marshall, and they hand it to him, and Marshall comes near sideline, forced out of bounds by Jackson Arone. And it'll be a positive gain inside the 35 to about the 34 yard line. Gain of four, it'll set up third down and six. Seven six, our score. Penn's Manor with the lead and hoping to drive for more. Third and seven. Third and seven on the 34. Homer's defense, their line has been getting good penetration. However, they're not covering the opposite zone. So whichever side the ball goes to, the other side is kind of left alone. And Third down and six here for the Comets. And Max Hill looking, pump fake, pocket collapses, pressure coming. They can't tackle him. Now he's trying to cut through traffic and he does at the 40, 35, 30, gets by Clevenger at the 25 and out of bounds at the 20 yard line. That was all Max Hill, gain of 14 yards and a new set of downs. The Comets are in the red zone once again. That was fun to watch as we look on our replay monitor. That's a first down. Up in the booth. First and 10 for the Comets. Pressure came up the middle and he gave ground back to the 40, to the 50 yard line, but actually into his own territory. And then found some seams, came near sideline, got by Clevenger and then finally forced out of bounds at the 20 yard line and Penn's Manor is gonna call a timeout. Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night coverage will continue from Pat Corrigan Field. Comets are in business at the Wildcat 20. When we return, they lead seven to six on the Renda Media Football. Looking for fun for the entire family? White Township Recreation is now the hub for all of your youth and adult recreation programming. Programming is now open online for registration. White Township Rec offers anything from art classes to gymnastics to bowling to boxing, fitness classes, and much, much more. For more information on public skating, including birthday parties and recreation programs, please visit whitetownshiprec.org. That's whitetownshiprec.org. See you at Public Skate, s and Bank Arena. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. the Penn's Manor timeout here in the first half and Marshall going to take the direct snap fumbles it picks it up on a hop and now he's in trouble and down he goes outside the 30 yard line going to be a big big loss of 12 or 13 yards I think that was the case if we look at the replay where Marshall was maybe looking where he was going before he took that snap let's see on our replay monitor well it was a bit high and he just couldn't quite pull it down a loss of 13 on the play. It'll be second, second down and 23. Again, the penetration's there. They just they have to be able, the Wildcats need to be able to contain. And when Max Hill has it, that's tough to do. Max Hill's probably going to outrun about everybody on that football field, except maybe for Joseph. Be interesting to see those two in a race. Here's Hill, takes the snap, going to throw deep. And coverage downfield, and it's through the outstretched arms of the receiver, Justin Marshall, right as he 22, got Marshall. behind Homer Center's Will Jones in the secondary. Jones on the coverage. So it'll be third down and 23. Third and 23 from the third. Yeah, I was just trying to see. There was a little hand fighting going on. Not much. Good non-call, I thought. Good crowd on hand here at Pat Oregon Field on this gorgeous night for football. It'll change, though, won't it, Ward? <laughs> yeah. Penn's Manor, two yeah. for five on third downs. Quick stats brought to you courtesy of Jerry Rossi and First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Thanks, Jerry, for your great work. Receiver, Amin Lieb, near side. Along in the left wing, it is Corvina. He's in motion, booting to his right heel. Hill flushed, pressured by 
Penn's manners, or Homer Center's Caleb Palmer, but uh, he's outside the tackle box, so that's now legal with the new rule in high school football this year. You, outside the tackle box, you you can throw it. No, I, I, that may be a horse caller. The Homer Center's coaches are applauding, so I don't think they'd be applauding that. No, they wouldn't. My bad. Lou Idzotic says intentional grounding. Intentional well, grounding. I'm not sure yes, then, Ward. He was outside the tackle box, no doubt about that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Dan Fletcher said the ball did not go past the line of scrimmage. So that'll be a loss of down as well, I believe. Fourth down. Nice so, to have an official at the PA the there, huh? He can help interpret these rules. Back to the 45-yard line. Intentional grounding, loss of down. So the Comets really backed up now. Justin Marshall to punt. And they're going to punt it away. Hey, well, you think so. <laughs> Justin Marshall's a pretty good runner. I wouldn't trust him. <laughs> No punts this year. This is his first of the season, and Krajosik takes it at the 21. Breaks one tackle, now comes near side, and he gets through a second tackle. Here comes Michael to the 30, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50s, and he's knocked out of bounds by Justin Marshall. But a dynamic return. Splash play on special teams for Homer Center. A return of 32 yards. That's the kind of stuff he can do in the open field. There were two or three clean shots at him, and they missed. That's what he can do. That's why he needs to get the ball in the open field. Four or five yards downfield, get him the football. And that will help Cole McAnally get his passing arm in shape. Right now he's throwing deep. Nothing's there. Jerry, uh, how long on that punt? 34. Ball at the Comet 47 yard line, 34. And Cole looking to pass, pump fake. Now he's gonna throw deep for Krajosik and that's not even, uh, that's all the way to Northern Cambria. Stop and go pass and just not sure. Second down. I don't wanna beat the dead I'm horse. Not, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> First down, he just ran a punt deck beautifully. He can't do anything if he don't have the football, Mark. That's my point of view. That's all. Second down. Well, I know what they want to do, but there's a time and place for it. You need to establish some some, some continuity now, and so far, Homer Land hasn't done that. That's a credit to the D of Penn's Manor. Landon Hill, four carries, seven yards. He has the football this time, and he backs his Number way eight, down to the 42-yard line. On the tackle for the Penn's Manor Comets, Nick Raphael. Carter Smith, number seven. One of the tackles defensively. So they put the football down at the 42, a gain of five. It'll be third, third down and five for Homer Center. Might got, be four down territory yeah, you got to bank on that offensive line to, to move the Penn's Manor corner. They're starting to push him a little bit. Third down and five from the shotgun. Cole McAnally hands again to Hill. Near side of the 40, cuts it back, dives to the 39. Good play by Max Hill, diving in low to knock Hill down, two yards shy of the first down. So we'll see what Homer Center does. We want to thank Walker Motor Company and the Meredith Inn in the Catanning area for sponsoring tonight's game on Renda Digital TV. At the 39. Fourth down and a deuce. Penn's Manor surely going to jam the box here. 7.35, clock ticking, 7.6 Penn's Manor. Cole McAnaldi going to go under center. Single setback is Hill. And Cole McAnaldi, hard count. Did Homer Center jump or did Penn's Manor saying Homer Center drew them offside? It sure did drew about four of them offside. Final play. Let's see what Lou Idzotic did, says. Did the guard move before or after the contact? Illegal procedure nope, on, Homer on Homer Center. So now you might bring out the punt team, right? Five-yard penalty. I would think. I don't, no, and Coach Page, I don't think he's going to. On the 44. That's a pretty big gamble because you've really been able to do nothing offensively. Hill 15, let's see, 16, 16 total offensive yards for Homer Center in this first half. But they will go, Cole McAnaldi from the shotgun. Takes the snap, Hill smothered in his own backfield. 
And frankly, it looked like Homer Center moved. Jumped the gun. Yeah, it didn't got block the two it. ends. Both ends were in on him before he could move. That's a great job by the defense. And some poor execution by Homer's offense. So the Wildcats going to give up field position instead of punting it away. Six fifty-four. Dennis Mester behind me. Our spotter saying you got to punt that ball. Well, Dennis, I'm on your side. Well, you got to understand. Greg Page believes in what his team can do. Unfortunately, they are not executing very well. Max Hill from the shotgun sends Marshall in motion. Boots to his left, throws underneath, wide open is Marshall to the 45. Will Jones has him, but not before. He gains 14, 14 yards to the Wildcat 40-yard line. They're just picking Homer Center apart underneath. Well, that's, again, a simple turn in, and that's an easy pass to throw and complete, and they're doing it. Why wouldn't you? And Homer has not realized that that's what they have got to do. Nope, I think every pass Homer Center has thrown, and there have been five of them, they've all been deep. You're right. They have. I mean, uh, Incredible. I'll give them one or two, but... First and 10 from the Wildcat 40. The Comets would dearly love to score again before the half, and they send Corvina in motion. Hill boots to his right, looking. He's going to throw deep this time. Corvina breaking, diving, can't get to it at the Wildcats' seven-yard line. On the coverage, Michael Krajosik and Jackson Arone look at it on the replay monitor here in the booth. Good protection. Started to break down, but it wasn't an issue. Good throw, just a little bit too far for the diving Corvina far sideline. Arone and Jones on the coverage. Thank you, John Smathers, for the outstanding replays that we get on our video monitor. Let's see if they come back with a short one now, Mark, and uh, catch Homer running the other way. Max Hill, 64 yards rushing in this first half. And he's going to boot to his left. Looks for a seam, gets it, gets by Hill, dances up the left sideline, very close to a first down, unless he stepped out of bounds. Yeah, he did. I guess he did step out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Mason Bell thought he had a pretty good handle on a, a, a angle on him, I guess is what I'm trying to say. But Hill just too quick got by him. Mason Bell second on the team with seven and a half tackles, actually tied with a few others in that uh, category for second. Landon Hill leads Third the down. team with nine and a half tackles in the first two games. Third down and four at the 34 of Homer Center. Mark Bagley, receiver, in a tight formation. They have Carter Smith in the backfield along with Corvina. And Hill rolling to his left. Picks up blockers, tackled right at that first down marker by Hill. It's going to depend on the spot. If they put it down on the paint, it's going to be a first down for the Comets at the 6.04 mark. And it is a first down. For a first down, first and 10 for the Comets. Nothing fancy. They just try to outnumber you to the edge. Now they're blocking well, and Homer's got to fight through those blocks if they want to stop them. You, you get Hill the edge, though, and we, you know, we said that at the beginning of the ball game. He's just too quick and too strong. You've got to keep him contained. Ten That's carries, 74 yards now. Easier said than Max. done. Sidecar is Bagley. Hill to pass. Hill pump fake now throws and has Smith underneath. Will Jones flings him down. Again, soft secondary coverage for Homer Center. Easy picking, gain of seven. Will Jones. Comets. Nice job of mixing plays, huh? A little pass, a little run. He'll always got to worry about Max Hill. Three catches for Smith. And Hill has thrown nine times and missed on only three. Six of nine, right, Jerry? Second down. First half statistically dominated by Penn's Manor. They deserve to be up by more if not for that turnover. Marshall going to take the direct snap. It's a bit high. He's going to boot to his right, try to get to the edge. And the Wildcats, Krajosik, I think it was, hits him first. The and there's a flag also on the far side. And we'll see what this penalty is about on the replay monitor as we look at it. And let's see. Don't really detect anything there. Procedure. All right. So that 
instead of back five yards. second down or third down in a yard, it's going to be marked off from the 23 back to the 28. Out of town scoreboard, halftime. West Shemokin 7, United Valley nothing. Plus start from the offense. Well, once again, Coach Packer <laughs> constantly seeing these penalties crop up at inopportune times. Cannot be happy. Second down eight from the 28. Influence left. Hill looking to pass. Hill looking, going to throw a wobbler, but open is Marshall, and he drops the football. Riley Clevenger had no idea where that ball was, and Marshall, I don't know if he was looking to run before he caught it. I know it was a wobbler. Let's see here on our replay in the, mo in the broadcast booth. And turning around and hit him in a bad spot, Ward. Yeah, right. In the bread basket, as they say. But it, the fact that it was end over end and he saw Clevenger bearing down on him probably took his eye off. Off the ball, I should Third say. Down. I want to say hello to Rob and Lisa Wooster down at the Outer Banks with Greg and Jill Mishna. Crystal clear broadcast, they said. That's good to know. Have a great time down there. Third down and eight. And Hill going to boot to his right through an opening. Has a first down and more to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and he's out of bounds inside the 10-yard line at the 8. Max Hill, the ball carrier. The Wildcats have no answer for Max Hill. The, uh, yeah, once again, Coach Page cannot be happy with the end play. It's enough for a first He's down. getting the edge too easily, and as you can see, once he turns it, they don't have any answer for him in that secondary. First Want to say to hello to... Uh, Phoebus Dokos watching tonight's game in Greece. That's amazing. <laughs> That's all I could say about it. And Just it's about three amazing. in the morning there, I believe. Yeah, I don't know, but it's amazing. First and ten Comets at the eight yard line. First and goal, I should First say. And, goal on the eight. and Marshall is going to take the direct snap. It's a bit high. He pulls it down, keeps it off the right tackle. Wildcats Marshall stand him up right near the line of scrimmage. Vinny Taglietti for Homer Center, along with Isaiah Bentz. Let's see where they put the football down. Right at the eight, so no gain. Talked about that offensive line of the Wildcats, but they're playing mostly defense, and they're not going to be able to do much offensively. They keep having to play defense all night. Nope, they are under 20 yards in total offense. That's, a, that's amazing. Credit to the Comets. Absolutely. Bagley, protector left. Let's see if they throw. Nope, student body left. Here comes Hill, they drag him down, and they're gonna call horse collar on Homer Center's Aiden Bikina. Right on the play. Well, the Wildcats can't win for losing. Horse collar tackle. So let's watch it on the replay here. Did he get all jersey there, or do you have the? Well, the crowd reacted. Well, and yeah, anytime that happens, you're going to react. But I couldn't tell if they had. It looked like he had jersey. I don't know if we can get one more look at it or not. On our, here we go. Good effective play by Bikina, except the penalty. Look more jersey, to be honest with you. He grabbed them near the shoulder and then held on. I don't know. Penalties, 10th penalty of the game. Be on the nine yard line, first. Second and goal for the nine. So second and goal, not an automatic first down. But not a loss either. Motion man, Corvina, Hill, boots to his right. Wildcats get, get to him. They seal it off. Hill to the five, Hill to the pylon, touchdown, untouched. He had an easy trip to the end zone. And the Comets now lead 13 to six. This is the Max Hill show tonight. He is stealing the show as far as our Hills brothers uh, match up here tonight. They're not brothers, but you get the point. It's 13-6 Penns Manor. Again, some good blocking on the edge. At Homer's DN he was not able to get free and, and turn that in. Once, as, as we've said, once he gets to the corner, it's good lie. And Time out called by Penn's Manor. IRMC High School Sports Night coverage will continue. With the score, Penn's Manor 13, Homer Center 6 with 412 remaining in the half on the WCCS Renda Media Football Network.
Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sales. Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Check them out on Facebook, Johnston Nursery Landscaping. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now, and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Plus, at Luther Ford, you'll save big during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. Right-footed soccer-style kicker Justin Marshall. Three for five this season on extra points. And the kick is put up, and the kick is good. So a very impressive nine-play, 54-yard drive. They were two out for two on third downs. They picked up three first downs. Max Hill on that drive, 53 of the 54 yards on five carries. He's now over 100 yards rushing in the game on 12 carries. All Comets in this first half. Homer Center very fortunate that it's not a lot worse. It's Comets 14, Homer Center 6 on the Renda Media Football Network. I liked the one with a stained glass ship in the front door. You liked the one with the two-car garage. But then we found it, the one. It had a porch swing, a yard for our dog, a room for your office. Sure, it was 95 years old, but when we met with Amy at s and Bank, she mentioned they had been around for over 115 years, and that made me feel better. Because even if we won't be here in 115 years, maybe our grandkids will be. With you here at Penn's Manor. What an impressive drive, Ward Hilliard, for the Comets. Sure was, uh, and again, it's a, it was a question of whether or not to punt. Homer opted not to punt, came back to bite him. Oh, a big old harvest moon starting to make its way up across the way. Homer needs a little moon luck here. <laughs> They're off Justin it's Marshall, it's been terrible. But let's look at it the other way. Penn's Manor's defense has been terrific. Marshall approaches the ball. It's a squib. Going to go inside the 10 yard line. Krajosik picks it up at the 5. Krajosik to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and he's in the loose at the 30. Smith trying to get the angle on him, and they knife him down over the 40 yard line. But Krajosik with a 37 yard return, and that looked like it was going to be more disaster for Homer Center. But Krajosik, with his athleticism, said, I can do some things on the football field too, and he did just that. And we should have immediate timeout, but let's see. Should be immediate timeout. And we do, with 4.03 remaining in the first half on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on WCCS and Renda Digital TV, presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. It's Penn's Manor 14 and the Homer Center Wildcats 6 on the Comets Wildcats Renda Media Football Network. Next Friday evening against the River Valley Panthers. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC.
to Homer Center. Let's see if they can get something going offensively from their own 43-yard line. They give it to Hill. Hill is tackled in his own backfield. Again, Bagley. Is anybody blocking Mark Bagley? Because he came clean again. Let's see here in our, on our replay monitor. Coming from the left edge, unblocked. You had Taglietti pulling. Nobody touched him. Uh, they're stacking the box. Uh, there's just too many people to block, and they're not blocking the ones that they're supposed to. So that's a great job. Second down and 10. Here's Krajosik. Throws. Hey, what do you know? A pass underneath. Krajosik hauls it in for a short gain. A gain of about four or five yards. But, Ward, that's what they need to do. Yeah, that'll bring that corner up a little more. And then he can kind of get him a juke and then go. And he'd be open. And you don't have to throw it 30 yards either. Good closing by Eric Baum. Yeah, that was a great cornerback. tackle. And sure-handed tackle indeed. Third down and six. Five-yard pickup on that pass play. Wildcats have Krajosik near side. Mason Bell, H back to the right. Penn's Manor adjusts defensively. They fake it to Hill. Cole McAnulty has it. Cole McAnulty dives into Penn's Manor territory to the 49-yard line with 240 to play. Now you have to punt the football award on Fourth down yeah, I don't think you got any wiggle room Fourth here. Fourth down. Fourth and, Fourth two. and two. This would be on the 49. You can't afford not to make it and give them the ball at midfield. No. They might just run it down and take a timeout. Wow, they are going for it. This is the Riverboat Gambler. Yeah, and this uh, could be the ball game too. Try to maybe go with a hard count. And Penn's Manor did not jump. Nah, they did yeah, the, flag him. The nose guard jumped, broke the plane. He did jump. He, he did well, jump into Well, let's see the, what that shows. Yeah, he got in. Let's see right here. That ball off sides on the defense. To five yards. Right here. He was in the neutral zone right there with his foot. And that's all you need. Yep. The benefit of the replay monitor, Ward Hilliard. Yeah, us old people can't uh, keep up with this action. Hey, I want to thank the Penns Manor School District for their hospitality, Absolutely. their IT department, maintenance, helping us out. Fabulous, guys. Thank you so much. First and 10, Cole McAnulty going to throw deep for Krajosik. He's open. He takes it at the 15 and drops it at the 15 or at six points. Let's see the replay. On our I don't know. monitor. I don't know what happened, Mort. For Josic. That was there. Takes it uh, right in the hands. We saw the other side. That's why they're, well, you see it in I the pros. I think he took his eye. It, it was a little behind him, and I think it was, he saw the two guys closing. And it, that's all it takes. You know, you just take your eye off a second. Boom. Nice pass that time, though. That's encouraging. Second down and 10 from the Comet 44. Cole McAnulty hands it off to Hill. Hill cut back to the 40, dances, spins his way to the 40, 35 to the 33. Outstanding run and a first down for Landon Hill. Yeah, one thing about Landon On the tackle, Mark Bagley along with Adam Altimus. And it is a new set of downs with 130 to play. He, he's pretty fresh, Mark, because he hasn't really carried like he's used to. 23 yards on nine carries that's right up to date. A, that's a credit to the Pence Manor D. Dude. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Influence to the short side of the field, but they hand it to Landon again, and Landon's knifed down beautifully right at the line of scrimmage by Amin Lee. But Pence Manor will get the ball to start the second half. They are making some good tackles. I'll say that. They're coming up and they're making tackles. That's one thing that okay. Bill Packer talked to me about. We have to make be sure-handed tacklers against a big back. Timeout by Homer Center with 56 seconds left in the first half. We'll take one with them on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night and on Renda Digital TV presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. 14-6 Comets. Wildcats trying to answer before the break on the Renda Media Football Network. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. 
The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. Dan and Evan. just on the gridiron. Fevers, falls, bumps, and bruises. If your child or teen needs care and your doctor's office is closed, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is open weekdays and weekends from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Since 2009, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge. Get in, get out, get better. 14-6 Comets, second down and 10 inside of a minute here at Pat Corrigan Field, and we have a whistle and a timeout, I think, called by Penn's Manor. Yes, indeed. Time out, Penn's Manor. Well, yes, we will take another break. We'll out. step out with 56 seconds remaining. 14-6 Comets, you know the drill, on the Renda Media Football Network. Looking for fun for the entire family? White Township Recreation is now the hub for all of your youth and adult recreation programming. Programming is now open online for registration. White Township Rec offers anything from art classes to gymnastics to bowling to boxing, fitness classes, and much, much more. For more information on public skating, including birthday parties and recreation programs, please visit whitetownshiprec.org. That's whitetownshiprec.org. See you at Public Skate, s and Bank Arena. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. Watching tonight's Renda Digital TV feed in Hatteras Island, North Carolina. Oh, Second down. Well, oh, we have the wrong life, Ward. Second down and 10 for Homer Center. Cole McAnally boots to his right. Smith with pressure up the middle. Dumps it off. Intercepted. He threw it right to Marshall, who's forced out of bounds at the 40-yard line by Landon Hill. Not sure what Cole was looking at there. We'll get a quick replay on our monitor. But it's Penn's Manor with the late chance now. Well, that's the hill run on the sure-handed tackle by Amin Lieb. But uh, Homer Center turns it over. Ward, what did you see? I think he just kind of panicked and just missed his mark here. Here's the replay not sure here. Who that was intended for? See right here, he just dumped it. Wow, there was really not nobody, a white jersey. There was close. nobody home. That was a more of a panic pass. <laughs> And the Homer D's got a hole here. They got 50 seconds to go. Well, this would be a big score for the Comets. And they hand it off to Corvina. Corvina smothered. Penn's Manor does not have any timeouts. Caleb Palmer, Isaiah Benz, Vinny Taglietti. Line of scrimmage was the 40. They lose two yards. Not in any big hurry, so I think they'll be very content to go in the locker room. As you said, Mark, they do receive the second half kickoff, so no need to rush yourselves here into a mistake. 20 seconds left in the half. They send Carter Smith to the right boundary. Near side, here comes Ashton Corvina. This Comet team very well prepared for tonight's game. Both teams, I'm sure, were well prepared. Here's Hith, uh, Hill again. Hill through pressure, uh, through pressure. Here he comes near side. White jersey's trying to catch him, and they trip him up. It was Will Jones, but he is slippery. Max Hill. He gets his big lineman chasing him, and he's just having fun, just like a cat chasing a mouse here. 18 <laughs> yards as the first half comes to a close. There's no time on the clock. 
And Homer Center is down 14 to six. Really, Ward, I think they're fortunate. lucky they're to be down 14 to, be to six. Down just by one score. They have been dominated in this football game. And if not for a strip fumble that set up a short five yard touchdown run, Homer Center would be uh, shut out in this first half. No question about that. We'll see what happens in the second half. A lot, can, a lot of uh, ebb and flows to games like this at the half. It's Penn's Manor 14 and the Homer Center Wildcats 6. Stay with us for our ITT halftime show coming up next right here on the Renda Media Football Network. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. Stadium lights are going out. The bleachers are empty. The reason, no officials. When fans are disrespectful to the calls on the field and those who make them, it is a hard position to fill. Show your support for your PIAA officials by demonstrating respect. Let's all work together so the game is great for everyone. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them, on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. broadcast booth we are at the half with Penn's Manor leading the Homer Center Wildcats 14 to 6. Homer Center scored the only points of the first quarter. Penn's Manor answered with 14 in the second quarter. Let's tell you how it happened here at Pat Corrigan Field. Homer Center received the opening kickoff. 26-yard kickoff return from Michael Krajosik, but they went three and out 
they did miss a wide open receiver, Riley Clevenger, on what would have been a touchdown pass. Got a 28 yard punt from Michael Krajosic. Comet started at their own 21, but they, uh, after a first play run of 34 yards to Homer Center's 46, fourth and three, Hill ran it to the Homer Center's 29, but then a sack and they ended up stalling at the Homer Center 30 yard line. Wildcats went three and out, a 70 yard punt with the benefit of a big roll. That's one Max Hill, about the only thing he did wrong in the first half. And uh, it rolled dead at the Penn's Manor two yard line. So Penn's Manor starting at the two on a second down and nine from the three yard line. We believe it was Riley Clevenger that stripped the ball from quarterback Max Hill and Homer Center ended up with it at the Penn's Manor five yard line and they got it down to the one yard line and one of the few bright spots for Homer Center in the first half, quarterback Cole McAnulty handed it off to Landon Hill. Cole McAnulty under center gives to Hill, Hill sidesteps his way into the end zone for a Homer Center touchdown from a yard out his eighth of the season, sixth consecutive score overall for Hill for Homer Center. And the Wildcats lead six to nothing. They take advantage of the short field and the strip fumble, and it's six nothing Wildcats. Wow, what a turnaround, all set up by that 70 yard punt. Extra point hit the upright. It was slightly tipped, we think, at the line of scrimmage. So two play, five yard drive that took 38 seconds. It was six nothing Homer Center. Penn's Manor started their next drive after a kickoff return and a face mask penalty advanced the ball 15 yards into Homer Center territory at the 49 yard line. They got a run of 15 yards and then a personal foul penalty on Homer Center, advanced it to the 31 yard line. Max Hill ran 36 yards for a touchdown, but it was wiped out on a holding penalty, backed it up to the 48 yard line. But on third down and 22, a 28 yard Max Hill to Ashton Corvina pass, took the ball to the 15 yard line. The quarter ended with Penn's Manor at Homer Center's 10 yard line. It was six nothing Homer Center. Fourth down and five at the Wildcat 10 to start the second quarter. And Max Hill, who did it all in the first half, completed his first touchdown pass of the season. Fourth down and about four to go for the Comets. They send Corvina in motion and Hill rolls to his right, looking. They pressure him, he rolls to his left, he dumps it off to Smith, takes it at the 10-5, touchdown, Penn's Manor Comets. Touchdown. Excellent job by Max Hill, who has his first touchdown pass of the season and we are knotted up at six as they converted that big fourth down play. Marshall added the extra point at the 412 mark, or actually not at the 412 mark, at the 1151 mark, just nine seconds into the second quarter and it was seven six Comets. Wildcats got a big return, uh, or actually went three and out. Penn's Manor got a big return of a punt by Hill but a block in the back backed them up to the 48-yard line of the Comets. They ended up uh, getting sacked on that drive. 34-yard punt and a 32-yard Michael Krajosic return set Homer Center up at the Penn's Manor 47-yard line. They had a long pass that was incomplete on first down and um, ended up with a fourth down and seven. They went for it. Hill was tackled for a loss and it really flipped the field in Penn's Manor's favor, and boy, did they take advantage. Third down and eight play. They had a Max Hill 20-yard run to Homer Center's eight-yard line. Then there was a horse collar penalty on Homer Center after a sack, so they set the ball first and goal at the nine-yard line, and Max Hill did the rest. Get, get to him, they seal it off. Hill to the five, Hill to the pylon, touchdown, untouched. 
He had an easy trip to the end zone, and the Comets now lead 13 to 6. This is the Max Hill Show tonight. He is stealing the show as far as our Hills brothers uh, match up here tonight. They're not brothers, but you get the point. It's 13 6 Penn's Manor. And speaking of points, Justin Marshall added a kick to make it 14 to 6. Nine plays, 54 yards. Took two minutes, 42 seconds. Cats 37 yard return from Krajosik on the kickoff return to Homer Center's 43. And then they had a dropped touchdown pass. I'm sure Michael Krajosik would like to have it back. Penn's Manor had dropped one earlier. And uh, Homer Center then an interception. Cole McAnaldi threw it right to Justin Marshall. And Penn's Manor ran out the clock. Penn's Manor marching band out on the field after a great performance by the Homer Center marching band. And our ITT halftime show will roll on with a look at the stats that shaped up the first half. It's Penn's Manor 14 and the Homer Center Wildcats 6. You're watching it on Renda Digital TV, listening, we hope, on WCCSAM 1160, 101.1 FM, and on the Trib Live High School Sports Network, 14-6 Comets. Ward will look at the stats after this on the Renda Media Football Network. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Looking for fun for the entire family? White Township Recreation is now the hub for all of your youth and adult recreation programming. Programming is now open online for registration. White Township Rec offers anything from art classes to gymnastics to bowling to boxing, fitness classes, and much, much more. For more information on public skating, including birthday parties and recreation programs, please visit whitetownshiprec.org. That's whitetownshiprec.org. See you at Public Skate, s and Bank Arena. Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sales. Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Check them out on Facebook, Johnston Nursery Landscaping. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now, and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Plus, at Luther Ford, you'll save big during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. I like business. In field, 14 to 6 Comets. And I'm sure the stats will reflect something that looks worse than what the scoreboard says. <laughs> Ward Hilliard, let's take a look. Honestly, Mark, this might be one of the worst first halves, any half, that I've seen from a Homer Center team in a long, long time. First of all, Landon Hill, 10 carries, 23 yards. He had that one touchdown. Cole McAnulty had three carries for three yards. Homer rushed 13 times for 24 yards and the touchdown. Through the air, McAnulty one of eight for just five yards and an interception. Homer had 21 offensive plays, 29 total yards. That is embarrassing. Four pins matter. 
Matt, Max Hill, 13 carries, 122 yards, one touchdown. Chester Marshall had seven carries, minus seven. Homer bottled him up. Corvina with five carries for just two yards. 25 rushing attempts, 117, one touchdown on the ground. Max Hill was just five of 10 through the air for 72 yards, but one touchdown there. 35 offensive plays, 189 yards for the Comets. And uh, some penalties kept that up from under under 200. So total yards? 189 for the Comets, 29 for the Wildcats. Wow. That's amazing. That's embarrassing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> With that big line? Since 2009, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville has been there for you and your family with convenient access. Urgy Care is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. With seamless access to the main IRMC campus, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, Old Route 22 in Blairsville. Enough with the waiting game. Get in, get out, get better. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, better health, better life as Ward chomps down on his third sandwich of the half. This is uh, a That's tight a press box, but boy, do they treat us well. Well, they sure do, and it's good food. <laughs> I jerry-proofed my food. If you remember a few years back, um, Jerry <laughs> dipped into my halupki. I trusted him to take them down to my car. Jerry, that was a vote of confidence for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to see what's left when I get home. That'll be the key. Might be empty styrofoam containers. Penn's Manor, marching band on the field. You know the assistant band director out here is Nathan Johnston. Nathan's one of our sponsors because he has an outstanding business by the name of Johnston Landscaping. Ooh. And uh, Nathan, a great company that he's built. I never knew that he was the assistant out here. One time he was at Indiana. So, Nathan, a little shout out and thank you. He's sitting right down on the bench, right down below us on the Comets bench. So, anyway, we're going to come back on our ITT halftime report. We'll set up the second half for you, give you the out-of-town scores, too. It is Penn's Manor with total domination in the first half, yet an only an eight-point lead. 14-6 Comets on the Renda Media Football Network. My name is London, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right, London. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for five area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com, an equal opportunity employer. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania.
Sycamore Center welcomes West Shemokin. Other games next week as we look ahead in the conference. Cambria Heights will visit Marion Center. Northern Cambria, United Valley. River Valley will come to face this talented Penn's Manor team. And Portage will visit Purchase Line. 14-6 Comets at the break, 20-minute half times. We understand the Heritage Conference is really the only league we know of that adopted that. We're not sure why. And the coaches, I can tell you, are not happy about no, it. No, I can blame them. That's a long time to be sitting around. You said what you need to say pretty quick, and you want to get them back on the field, and uh, that's a long time. So here Where we go. Out-of-town scoreboard word. Quick why? comment. Portage, oh. 28. Marion Center, 10 at the break. As, expected. That was a quick comment. West Shemokin, <laughs> 7. United Valley, nothing. And uh, that's a, a, a pretty good score. United Valley trying to get righted. Okay, you're doing well so far, Ward. Cambria Heights, 21. River Valley, 14. Mm -hmm. that, that's surprising a little bit. River Valley did not play well last week, but uh, they seem to be giving Cambria Heights all they can want. Northern Cambria, 13. Purchase line, 6. Purchase line uh, starting to make some noise. Northern Cambria, though, is going to be tough to beat. And with WPIAL, Shadyside Academy 13, Indiana 7. Well, Indiana's still in it. That's good. they got to take advantage of every opportunity. And Shadyside's not the power that used to be. So. All right. So that's your out-of-town scoreboard. Teams are back out on the field. I don't even think John noticed, but our business manager, Lauren Marshall, was behind him. And Kerry Rako and a couple of kids. And they left. But they waved and wanted to see our setup. And Lauren actually has three uh, stepsons involved with the program. Riley Kobaz, a uh, freshman on the team. And then Gabriel is on the junior high team. And then there's a younger one. And boy, trying to remember the first name. Dennis saying, I can't spot that one for you. But anyway, um, they're here watching the game on this beautiful night for football. And we hope they didn't steal our food. <laughs> There could be trouble in the business department. It's 14-6 Comets over the Wildcats. Ward, just very quickly, Penn's Manor, I don't know that they have to adjust anything. Homer Center, if you're Greg Page, what did you talk about? Well, I, th I think you got to make some adjustments. I personally would like to see them go into more power eye formation and try to drive the ball a little bit. Their their spread offense isn't working, and, and that's due to the fact their passing game isn't working. Uh, so they, they've got to work on something that can give them some, some positive yardage on a consistent basis. And it'd be, Homer Center's known for driving down the field. They ain't driving here tonight, and the team that's driving is in the blue and white. And from Homer Center side, I think there would have to be concern about fatigue because they've been on the field a lot. I realize teams play both ways regardless, but it's a little bit different when you're chasing players all over the line. Yeah, I made the comment that as good as that offensive line is, they're not very good if they're wore out because they're chasing Max Hill, and they, that's been the case for that first half. I mean, the, the, the number of plays was almost double. That's the ITT halftime report. We get ready for the second half kickoff. The team wearing white, the Homer Center Wildcats, will kick off to the team wearing blue and white, the Penns Manor Comets. They lead 14 to 6 on the Renda Media Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. I liked the one with the stained glass ship in the front door. You liked the one with the two-car garage. But then we found it, the one. It had a porch swing, a yard for our dog, a room for your office. Sure, it was 95 years old, but when we met with Amy at S&T Bank, she mentioned they had been around for over 115 years, and that made me feel better. Because even if we won't be here in 115 years, maybe our grandkids will be. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well stocked. Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool, or how about shuffleboard? 
What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. I'm... Bikina kicking off, and it's a squibber that is bobbled, then picked up and downed at the 37 or 38-yard line. With that football, it was Troy Williams. It's what you wanted to do, uh, just get it down past the 40. Penn's men are no return. Did uh, Bikina kick off after the touchdown? Yes, yes okay. he did. Yes, he did. So that's a change. Penn's Manor at their own 37-yard line. First and 10 for the Comets on their own 37. See if we detect any changes for Homer Center and lining up five yards offside, now backing up with Mark Bagley. And they change uh, tight end left to right. I mean lead, they go strong right. And they give to the deep back, Corvina. Corvina is hit by Michael Krajosik and pushed back and then out of bounds after a short game. Stop made by 24 Michael That's good closing in. Homer's bottled up the, the running backs pretty much of Penn's Manor, as you heard from the stats, Mark, but no 122 yeah. yards for Max Hill kind of compensated for that. But they've got to get something out of their other runners. Loss of 30, or a loss of a yard back to the 36. <laughs> It'll be second down and 11. Casey Harper, right corner for Homer Center. Safety's Jackson own. They lost Austin Zen Zenizak, which was huge, would have been a two-way performer. Hill, here he comes, near side. They're trying to bust through and get him an angle, and they can't do it. Harper tackles him and gets over the 40 with some help from Mason Bell. So they'll gain of about six on that play up to the 42-yard line, depending on the spot, and it will be the 42. So a gain of six, third, down. third down, and about five to go for the Comets. Trying to see who was, uh, that was Bikina, who did a great job of almost getting to Max Hill, but he's got to get some support on those wide side people. Ball at the 42, Homer Center's had trouble getting off the field as well on these third down plays. They give to Carter Smith, who's gonna to look to throw, and Smith gonna air it out, it's a wobbler, and but it's caught, and breaking and dropping the ball at the 31 yard line. Let's see how they rule it. I think it's gonna be a completed catch to Justin Marshall, yeah. and they're gonna move the chains. So a little bit of trickery from the Comets as they hand it off to Carter Smith, who set up shop. And first down. if he throws it on target, Ward, it's going to be an easy center, touchdown. 30. Yeah. Wildcats had two people back, but they were beat. Yeah. Comets are doing, as I said earlier, they're doing a nice job of mixing stuff up. 28-yard like, pass to Homer Center's 32. Empty set, and Hill looking to pass again. Fires, Smith has this one at the 24-yard line. That had some zip on it for Max Hill. Landon Hill, the touchdown, uh, the uh, tackle on Carter Smith. And it'll be second down, and it's about two to go. It's a big drive for uh, both teams. Penn's Manor could be a knockout punch if they can score yeah, it. Yeah, that's my point. Uh, two scores might be too much for the Wildcats where their offense is played. This has been total domination tonight, but the score right now is close. Influence to the left, that's the way they hand it off, but cutting it up is Marshall, has a first down and more inside the 20, down to about the 18-yard line for a gain of six more. Jackson Aron on the tackle. And the Comets continue to carve up Homer Center. And the Wildcats look like the team that's tired right now. First and 10. Well, I would think so. Uh, chasing number one around in that first half. Give the Comets credit. Well, they've got a great game plan. And they're, other than the penalties, they've done a great job with it. Split backs behind Hill, who goes under center, takes the snap, comes near side, gets a wall of blockers, and has some yardage out of bounds, forced by Vinny Taglietti and Mason Bell. It's going to be a short gain, maybe a yard. 
inside of 10 minutes to play. It's 14-6 Penns Manor starting this drive at their own 37. Short game, second and nine. Going to be second down, almost 10 to go for the Comets. This is where your D needs to make a big play, tackle for a loss, something of that nature. Receiver Carter Smith split, matching up on him is Krajosik, and Hill rolls to his right. Throwing underneath all alone is Corvin at the 15, the 10, stops at the five and into the end zone for a touchdown. Outstanding move by Corvina. He was wide open as Homer Center has been giving up chunks of yardage. They have found seams in this defense and it is all Penn's Manor, 20 to six over the Homer Center Wildcats as they drive 63 yards. Nice job by Max Hill again, just letting the defense come to him. Corvina slips out into the flat and uh, is wide open. The people come up uh, to try to stop Max Hill and he just throws it to Corvino, who's wide open. Nice little move downfield. Justin Ooh. Marshall to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of Max Hill. Snap is put down and the kick is up and looks wide right and it is no good. But Penn's Manor scores again. 9.05 remaining in the third quarter on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on WCCS. Rend to Digital TV on the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club. It's all Penn's Manor. Comets 20, Wildcats 6 on the Renda Media Football Network. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. When your vehicle needs tended to, take it to Baroni's Auto Care. Baroni's Auto Care inspects, does minor repairs including brakes and exhausts, as well as oil changes and tune-ups. And if you're looking for tires, Baroni's Auto Care sells all brands. Baroni's Auto Care is currently accepting new customers. So when your vehicle needs inspected or repaired, take it to Baroni's Auto Care right off Route 56. Look for the sign in Brush Valley. seconds and the Comets will kick off again quick stats all night long brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank time to be first Ward I think uh, we expected a tight football game yes. here tonight much it's different far from over but uh, this has been total domination absolutely the Comets have found some things that they can do well and they've exploited them Homer has found nothing Marshall squib kick Gets by Hill, picked up on a hop by Krajosik, who can be a game changer at the 18. Out over the 30, and to the 32-yard line. Pretty good kick coverage by Penn's Manor. Downfield, Eric Baum, along with Braden Depp. And the Wildcats with 8.58 to play in the third quarter. If you're a Wildcats supporter, they need to get something going desperately. Yeah, they need to move the football. Even if they don't score, they need to show themselves that they can do something positive offensively uh, just to stay in this ball game, Mark. Right now, they cannot afford to give up another score. Cole McAnaldi, his first game since opening night, and he played only a quarter plus in that game due to a concussion. So there's a lot of rust. The Wildcats have gotten no continuity this season out of the gate. Cole throws underneath, almost intercepted by Justin Marshall. As Cole looked directly at Riley Clevenger, we get a replay. I don't think he looked anywhere else. Well, this is uh, Max Hill throwing back to that touchdown pass on our replay monitor to Corvina, who made a great move at the eight and then took it in the rest of the way. Here, let's see Ward if he just focuses in on Riley Clevenger. Well, I don't know that we're going to get it in time here. So second down and second 10. Down. Yeah, he did look right at him. And he hands it off, and it's Hill. Hill stood up and drilled at the 34 after a gain of two. 
On the tackle for the Comets, Carter Smith and Max Hill. That'll be third down and eight. The Wildcats have had third and long distance here on many drives. And a couple drives where they went for it around midfield were backfired on them. They cannot seem to shake Landon free. They're not creating any gaps for him to get into that secondary. Wildcats 0 for 5 on third downs tonight. Quick stats again brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Cole McAnaldi takes the direct snap. Boots to his right. Throwing incomplete intended for Krajosik over the middle. And this Wildcat offense is completely out of sync. Fourth down. Yeah, again, I, 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 when you're having struggles like this, I think the thing to do is simplify. And, and these guys have all run eye formation with a lead back and uh, give Landon a little bit of help that way and see if he can pound the ball. Uh, they've tried to run this spread. Joseph it's just not run. working. But Josic stands at his own 18-yard line. And they, uh, yeah, they spotted the ball two yards behind the line of scrimmage. Long snapper Dan Jones for Homer Center. Back deep, Max Hill. I don't know that he's returned a punt for a touchdown. He has a pick six. <laughs> he does so that. He might bring the house down if he adds that to the resume tonight. Good snap from Dan Jones, and the kick is a good one from Krajosik. Hits at the 35 and takes a lateral bounce, and Hill thinks about picking it up, but stays away from it at the 43. So the Comets will have excellent field position to start their second drive of the half, a punt covering 23 yards. So the bounce that time did not help Did not Krajosik. work in Homer's favor. I want to thank our studio engineer, Michael Burdick, video producer, John Smathers, our statistician, Jerry Rossi. Spotter in the booth, Dennis Mester. Thanks, guys, for all your great work with Ward Hilliard. I'm Mark Burdick as the Comets First and ten start the comets their at own their 43. own 43. You know, when your offense is struggling like Homer's is, your defense starts to suffer. They, they, they don't have the fight in them that they used to have, and uh, as a result, they give up some chunks of yards. Marshall from the Wildcat. Has short yardage from the 43 to the 46. Romy Dokos and Aiden Bikina converge on him. But a gain of three out over the 45 where it sets up second down and seven. Comets had a great game plan coming in, and they've executed it beautifully. And again, it all revolved around Max Hill being the athlete that he is. They've used him beautifully. 20 to six, Penn's Manor with the lead and the ball. And in no rush, you wouldn't think. Max Hill from the gun. In the backfield with him is Mark Bagley, sidecar right, and Hill looking to pass, fires incomplete. Intended receiver Carter Smith, that time a little better coverage from Casey Harper, who closed uh, quickly as we get a replay on our monitor here up in the booth. And Max Hill that time kind of telegraphed that one yeah. and was a little errant on the toss. It'll be third down and seven, again, Homer Center. Um, what's the third down situation for Penn's Manor? Jerry, do you have it? Well, we'll see how they do here. Third and seven. Booting to his right. Max Hill has running room if he wants it. Cuts it up to the 50, to the 45, and a first down, and he's going to take it to the house. He's going to take it 54 yards for a touchdown as the Max Hill show continues to shine Touchdown. here at Pat Corrigan Field. And the Comets are blowing out Homer Center. It's 26 to six with 7.13 to play in the third quarter. That's just beautiful athleticism. He knows when he's back there and he sees these linemen chasing him. He's just, he can get around them and that's not a problem. He's looking downfield, sees the gaps, and then he takes, uh, with that speed, you know, you give him a gap, he's gone, and that's the case right there. Well, this Homer Center football team, we're moving forward, and we cover them week to week. Boy, do they have a lot of work to do. <laughs> you think? They have really not played well this, this season. No, they have not. They have not been as consistent as we thought they might. But they've had a lot of injuries at the game's most important position. Marshall to attempt the extra point. And the kick is up, and did it catch the left upright? It did not, wide left. So the Comets missed their second consecutive extra point, but they're up by 20. Surprise, surprise, not so much the Penns Manor's winning, but how they're dominating this football game. 
26-6 Penn's Manor with 7.13 left in the third quarter on the Renda Media Football Network. I'm Shannon Lipniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Hip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. Plays 57 yards, took 55 seconds. Penn's Manor, if you take away that last drive of the second half when they killed the clock, they've scored on three straight possessions. Just uh, got it going their way now, Mark. And it just shows you the talent of a kid like Max Hill and what he can do in a football game. He has completely taken this thing over. Homer has no answer for him. Reminds me of number three for Homer Center a little bit. Not saying he's Ben Schmidt, but... Uh, some similarities yeah. in the way he could dominate a football game. And now a flag, and what's this? Two flags, actually. It's only, the only thing positive that's going on tonight for Bomber Center has been the penalties for Penn's men. The only positive thing for us would be if Luigi's is still open after the game. <laughs> Out of town scoreboard, Northern Cambria 32-6 to now over Purchase Line, so that game really opened up. Uh, the Colts are for real. I, I, I knew that coming into the season, and I think uh, they're starting to catch people's attention now. <laughs> I don't know what the penalty was. Somebody Illegal like, formation. Uh, they only had three players on the uh, to the right of the that's kicker. That's right. That's right. Illegal formation on the kickoff. Back deep for Homer Center. Braden Dunn and Michael Krajosik. And speaking of Braden Dunn, we haven't called his number, and that's somebody we've said the Wildcats have to incorporate into this offense. Yeah, he's he's a, too good of an athlete. Tiff, he's not the power back. He's a quick scat Even back. as a receiver, given the loss of Zenizak. Here's a little squib kick, and the Wildcats let it bounce, and let's see who comes up with it. And their flag comes in late, too. Homer Center does have the football at their own 45. <laughs> Wildcats had, if we get a look, one of the up men. He called for a fair catch. And Clevenger let it go for whatever reason. And he, it was uh, Will Jones that covered it. And if that was a fair catch, it sure wasn't a clean fair catch. Flag on the play. They're calling it the, he didn't catch the ball. Well, it wasn't he a called. very emphatic fair catch signal. <laughs> he what? called it and then tried to block. That's a penalty. West Shimokin leading United Valley 14-12 to 12 on our out-of-town scoreboard. West Shimokin comes to Memorial Field next week. Well, let's see what I made the comment, even on the pregame interview with Coach Page, so fair catch, and then he blocked so that we'll see what the penalty markoff is. Homer Center lost Cole McAnaldi nine minutes left in the second quarter of week one. They lost their backup quarterback, Angelo Alexander, in the second quarter as Cole McAnaldi was in street clothes last week. Angelo's in street clothes tonight. Cole McAnaldi returns. In some ways, Locked it's like Homer Center's center. game one, and they just haven't been able to find anything. No. And I'm not making excuses. It's just that Homer Center's nowhere near where they should be as a football team. And I think that and change in coaching staff, one of their key coaches hasn't been with the team since late summer due to illness. Gene Raymond, we're wishing you well. Just a lot of things to unpack for Homer Center moving forward. 
I think they'll recover and become a good football team, but right now they're nowhere close. No, there's a lot of talent, and I think they've got to revisit where that talent is and how they want to use it. Uh, in some things you're just not going to be able to do. So they're going to re-kick. I don't understand. I've never seen this. Unless it's a 15-yard penalty. I don't know. So 15-yard mark off on Homer Center. That's why they're kicking from the fifth. Blocking the back's only 10 yards, I thought. It was an illegal signal for oh. fair catch, and then that player blocks someone, so that's illegal. So it's a 15-yard penalty. Comets will kick off from the 50. So the Wildcats will watch Penn's Manor kick off from midfield. And you might see another onside kick attempt here. Who knows, Justin Marshall has it on the far hash from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking, one customer at a time. And a little pooch kick again. Fair catch called for, juggled and caught by McCracken, who wants a penalty for being bumped into, but there will be none called, and nor there should have been. Fair it's catch. at the 35-yard line, and first, first and 10, ten for Homer Center. center. Yeah, he juggled the ball, so you could expect to get popped after that. <laughs> so... Homer Center with what? First and 10 for Homer Center. They're going to have any chance work. they got to get down and score. Simple as that. Simple as that. Or this game is O-V-E-R. Didn't think I could spell. Huh? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> First and 10 Homer Center at their own. Yeah, there's Dunn in the ball 35. game. 35. Braden in the backfield. And he gets the handoff, and he's smothered right at the line of scrimmage. Mark Bagley, Homer Center has not blocked him all night. We'll see if John gives us a replay in the booth on the Renda Digital TV side. Here he is, Ward. You tell me what happens. The guard pulls him, and the tackle lets him. Yep, same thing that happened. Dennis is exactly right. The guard, Tagliati's pull. pulling. It's a clean shot. It's, it's, oh, it's and the Wildcats have not corrected it. Second down, 10, generous spot. They put it back at the line of scrimmage. Little play fake on that. You could go right by Bagley. Cole's going to throw out in the flat to Clevenger. Clevenger breaks one tackle and gets a yard to the 36-yard line. Stop made by 55. Raphael. On the tackle, Nick Raphael. Penn's Manor hasn't been fooled by anything. They've been stacking. They are covering. A very short They're game. forcing Homer to throw the ball, and they can't. Uh, it's, it's a perfect game plan. I mean, I'm going to talk to Coach Becker after the game and see if this is what he had in mind, but I'm sure he's tickled to death. Third down and nine for Homer Center. Cole McAnally gets the play call from head coach Greg Page in a timeout as there's confusion on Homer Center side. Ward, at the walkthrough yesterday, I stopped briefly on my way back from Pittsburgh, and there was confusion running some plays on formations. So that tells you where Homer Center's at. 5.47 to play in the third quarter. It's Homer Center trailing Penn's Manor 26-6 on the Renda Media Football Network. Uh, wait, 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 we're going to keep it here. There was a penalty, my bad. Delay of game penalty on Homer Center. I thought it was a timeout. Things go bad, they go bad. And uh, Third down, 14. They send Dunn in motion out of the backfield. Now he lines up, twins left and right. Riley Clevenger in motion, snap high. Cole boots to his right. Looking, going to throw a wobbler downfield. Dunn can't get to it at the 40-yard line. And the Wildcats are going to go three and out yet again. That was a nice play. It was He was open, but unfortunately, the pass again, a little too long. And that's just, as you said, Mark, I think Rust, you know, he hasn't, uh, McAnally hasn't had a chance to really throw a lot of passes since his injury. And, uh, Max Hill back to receive the punt. Wildcats just not connected. These guys are open. Two passes for six yards tonight. Two of 12 with an interception. That brings their passing yardage up to 18 yards for the season. Incredible. Just Wildcats incredible. with some confusion with personnel again. And they do get, I think it was Clevenger out. Krajosic to punt. Kick high and short. 
Going to bounce at the 42, take a favorable Wildcat roll inside the 35 to the 32, where we will have a media timeout with 527 to play after a 38-yard punt and no return. It's Penns Manor 26 and the Homer Center Wildcats 6. On an IRMC High School Sports CCS Renda Digital TV presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club in the Twin Cities of Ben Hall. Coming back, Penn's Manor. Let's see if they can go four for four scoring on uh, possessions here with this big lead back after this. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club is making a splash, continuing to grow its membership. The Sportsman's Club features a fishing pond that is well stocked. Inside the club, members can enjoy a game of pool or how about shuffleboard? What's your favorite team, including the Wildcats and more? The Grayston Coral Sportsman's also has a shooting range and takes pride hosting kid-friendly events. And be sure to check out the nearby Twin Cities Event Hall for your next special occasion. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, located off Route 119 on Neal Road in Grayston. Are you thinking of getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. De At Pack Horrigan Field, Penns Manor starting this drive after the media timeout at their own 32. Max Hill under center. And a whistle and a flag coming in. Offside, going to be called, I think, on Homer Center. Changed the snap count, cadence a little bit. Caught Homer coming hard. So they'll mark it off against the Wildcats, who will be home next week against West Shemokin at media day over at Winber Stadium. The Wildcats received six first place votes out of 10 were picked to win the Heritage Conference. I know because I work with a couple people from Penn's Manor, including a sales manager, Jason Hill, whose son happens to be Max. They didn't like that. They thought Penn's Manor, I think, was picked third or fourth. I don't remember. John, do you remember? I don't think it was second. Fifth, Jerry said. Well, I would say the way they're playing Rolls are reversed. Yes. <laughs> Penn's Manor, I they think. They're playing like a number one. Give up the middle. And with the football for the Penn's Manor Comets, let's see who has it. You know, it was that, Bagley on the carry. That's the Bagley point. The carry, Homer has pretty much controlled all the other runners on this team, but Max Hill is just so dominant. Vinny Taglietti on the tackle for Max Hill. 182 yards rushing on 16 carries. Ward, we're going to send you down on the field for the post game, so maybe you can get Billy and Max, and uh, of course Greg Page. We'll just try to do everything down on the field if we can. Put you back where you love to be on those sidelines. Oh, I just love it. Second down and short. <laughs> Cut back. It's Marshall. Marshall dragged down as he gets over the 40, a yard shy of the first down. We still have a ways to go before we get to our first Commonwealth Bank post game show. Thank you, First Commonwealth Bank, for your support of Wildcat and Comets football. Romy Dokos on the tackle for Homer Center. Let's see if. Uh, I had texted his uh, father over in Greece. He said, 3 a.m. is right. Now, that was an hour ago. <laughs> and I said, what part of Greece did not get a response? Maybe he got mad and shut us off. Word, I don't know. Third down and short. And there's a flag. And the Wildcats. That's going to be a flag on Homer Center, I think. Well, they never blew a whistle. Though. Oh, they, they let it go. They had to blow the whistle to stop Yeah, that's it. true. They didn't blow the whistle. You didn't throw, blow the whistle. You can't well, blow the whistle. one one thing there on the, in, in Homer down. Center's in Homer Center in Homer Center's defense, they have their backs to the play. If there's no whistle, you play on. That was an error on the officials. So let's see what the penalty is all about. Sometimes people forget we're doing a broadcast here and we don't need yelling. <laughs> Most press boxes, you're not allowed to even talk. 
You know, Ward, it was funny at the pit game. They give you the big media announcement in the press box, attention media. Remember, this is a working press box. Talking is prohibited. Cheering is prohibited. Or you will be asked to leave the press box. It's every game. So at the end of the first quarter, they announced Romy, uh, or I'm sorry, E.J. Borghetti, longtime uh, sports information director at Pitt. His 25th anniversary, they announced some of his accomplishments. The media applauded between quarters. He got up and said, thank you very much. Uh, now I have to ask everybody to leave for violating press box protocol. <laughs> Illegal shift on Penn's Manor. Decline. So it'll be fourth down. 14th penalty of the game on both teams combined. So further evidence, the play went on. There wasn't a need for a whistle until the tackle, and then they called the penalty. That we didn't know, so that, but it adds credence to what we're saying. Punning will be Justin Marshall. He stands at his own 25-yard line. I think this is his second punt of the season, and he gets a good one away and a good roll inside the 30 down to the 27-yard line. Ball rolls out of bounds at the 27. I can tell you there's been many times at a pit game in the press box where I wanted to scream, and it would have been negative stuff, but I had to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> 355. Homer Center will take over at their own 27-yard line. First and 10 for the Wildcats on their 27. What was that punt, Jer? 36-yard effort from Marshall. The Wildcats come out. First and ten, and the give to Braden Dunn, Braden Dunn the to the 29-yard line Max for a gain of stop. two. Max Hill doing it on both sides. Again, second series up about in a row for Dunn. Not sure if Landon Hill is banged up or worn out. We understand that uh, Phoebus uh, Dokos is actually in Australia. <laughs> Well. Or no, I'm sorry, Carter Cavalier. I, I thought I'm getting my so many texts mixed up here. Give to Dunn. Dunn short yardage, a yard maybe from one side of the 30 to the other where Homer Center will have third down and long. Carter Cavalier, I see this is from Mike Cavalier. Carter Cavalier is in Australia. Mike makes a little bit of a joke here. They're 14 hours ahead of us. So Carter, if you can, please text us the final of this game and we'll head to Luigi's. <laughs> He's 14 hours ahead, right? And here's Cole McAnaldi on the read option. Cole knifed down by Amin Lieb at the 34-yard line. It'll be three yards shy of the first down as we are under three minutes to play. And here comes the Wildcats punt team. This uh, half for Homer Center, that's their third possession. All three have gone three and out. Three and out. Have no answer right now for this defense. They couldn't adjust Max Hill back for the comments. what the comments have been doing. They can't seem to block. Homer Center's Dan Jones has been a bright spot for Homer Center. Long snapper. Yeah. That's usually not a good sign. Good strong snap again. He's really good. Krajosik's kick hits at the 35. Max Hill lets it roll. And Will Jones, as the ball hit his knee, they're going to say down at the 31-yard line. Ball at IRMC at Chestnut Ridge and Blairsville Zergic Care, they fast track you for quick access to their team of medical experts. Highly trained and ready to treat all minor injuries and illnesses. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge offers a full spectrum of Urgic Care seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Old Route 22 in Blairsville. Get in, get out, get better. A part of the IRMC family. Better health, better life. First and 10 for the comments on their own 32. 33-yard punt and no return. This game has really settled into the uh, block. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Comets are just trying to run her out here. They get a full quarter yet. Uh, I don't been, think they're done yet. Been moving slow. Max Hill hands it off. And it is Corvina. 
about four yards to the 36 yard line. Landon Hill on the stop for Homer Center. Came into tonight's game as Homer Center's leading tackler. Second and six. Gain of four. Gain of four. Penn's Manor Comets will host River Valley next week. That game will be on our affiliate Cat Country 106.3 with Jake Slobotnik and Chuck Clark. Airtime will be 6.30. We'll be at Memorial Field. The Wildcats will try to regroup, hosting West Shemokin. Landon, uh, Max Hill under center, hands it off, and the give to Corvina has a first down. Homer center being outwilled right now, too, by Penn's Manor Ward. Kind of lost their spark, didn't they? They, uh, you know, as I said, when you can't do anything offensively, you kind of lose your will to play hard, and uh, that's kind of what we're seeing right now. They've been stuffing all those plays earlier, but uh, right now they're just kind of going through the motions, which is too bad. I'm not saying that 28-10, by the way, 28-18, uh, eight minutes left in the third, Portage, over, over Marion Center. First and 10 Comets at their own 44. Jet sweep, Marshall cuts it up. Marshall smothered by Aiden Bikina. I think he kind of slipped when he went to cut up, perhaps. But it was well defended by Homer Center. Aiden Bikina, I think, has had a good game here tonight for Homer Center. Yes, he has. Also coming in from behind, I'm not sure who that was. Maybe Romy Dokas. Or nope. I eh, can't tell on our replay monitor. They lose two yards back to the 42 yard line. 30 seconds left in this third quarter. Penn's Manor has scored twice, missed both extra points, but they have a comfortable 26 6 lead. And they give up the middle to Bagley. Bagley is banged down by Mason Hill. You know, the Wildcats defeated the Comets last year 51 to 20, 38 8 at halftime. Basically, the same group for Penn's Manor and many key pieces back for Homer Center. What a difference a year makes because at the end of the third quarter, it's Penn's Manor 26 and the Homer Center Wildcats 6. It's been total domination from start to finish for the Comets, and if not for a turnover deep in their own territory, they'd be heading toward another shutout, perhaps. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in a minute right here on the Renda Media Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Start the fourth quarter, Penn's Manor third and 10. Hill throws out in the flat to Marshall. Marshall, nice, oh no, he didn't tackle him. Casey Harper let him get loose. And Marshall into Wildcat territory, knocked out of bounds at the 48, about two yards shy of the first down. It is a fourth down. So let's see what Bill Packer does. At the, the Wildcat 48. Looks like they're going to send out the punt team, and that's probably the smart thing to do. Yeah, keep Homer bottled up. They haven't done anything to scare you, so uh, they hold him again. They'll probably get a good field position. Or uh, you, you consider Homer Center moving forward with this big offensive line. Marshall. Do you go back maybe more traditional, at least start introducing eye formation, power eye formation? Now they shift. They're going to go for it. Or maybe try to pull them offside. Now they shift back into punt formation. And Marshall does take the direct snap and gets the kick away. Heads far sideline out of bounds. And it's going to be at the 21 yard line. So a 27 yard punt. It was delay again. Oh, yeah. 
So the Wildcats with 11.44 to play in the football game. Trailing 26 to six, starting at their own 21 yard line. Was there a flag? Oh, it was a flag. Yeah, oh, it was. Oh, I'm they, they by did. the wall here. Let's see. <laughs> Delay of game. Delay of game against oh, Comets. Comets. So they're going to back them up and make them do it again, I guess. 6.15 will be our time next Friday night. Five-yard penalty. From Memorial Field on Renda Digital TV and WCCS. Any update on that Indiana game, Jerry, against Shady Side Academy? Jerry gets his mobile scoreboard out. Jerry could give us any score across the Commonwealth. The ball on the 47 yard line. So Marshall will cut, uh, do it again. Shady Side Academy, end of three. Good ball game. They're up on Indiana, 22 to 14. Long snapper Carter Smith, he's been solid too tonight in that department. And just as I say it, he short hops Marshall. <laughs> end over end, short kick. Dunn thinks about it. And he lets it go, and it takes a lateral bounce toward the center of the field where it's touched down at the 23-yard line. So the Wildcats gain two yards on that exchange. 30-yard punt. So anyway, Ward, back to Homer Center because we cover them all year. High formation, power eye, mix things up a little bit. Well, I've been a bad kid of doing that. Uh, you know, Greg Page's father was big on that. And that was back in the day of power football, though. But uh, sometimes you do. You change that up just to catch the other team off guard. Then you can go back into your spread. Maybe let, you've loosened them up. But you got to try something. Looks like Isaiah McCracken in there as a protector for Cole McAnaldi. And they hand it off to Isaiah. And Isaiah McCracken up over the 25 to the 26 yard line. Carter Smith, really impressed with him on both sides of the ball. Yeah, he's had a good game. Look at Cats our, have most of those comments. Wildcats had done as a receiver and handed the football off to a promising sophomore, McCracken. You know, Mark, the good news, you know, it's only the third game. So you have an opportunity to fix some of this stuff. The injuries have really played a huge part, though. See there again, Ward, confusion on where McCracken was supposed to be. Empty set. Now they put McCracken in motion, and he bobbles it, but he comes near side, has an opening at the 30 to the 35, 40. Midfield down the left sideline, and Corvina catches up with him, tries stripping the ball, and he does, but it's recovered by Homer Center at the 36-yard line. Wow, we'll get a replay recovered by... Isaiah Bentz, here it is, as he stumbled over the 50, and you can see Corvina right away is trying to rip it out. If you're watching the game, you see that. And then he did, but Isaiah Bentz, good hustle. The lineman downfield to recover it. First and 10. <laughs> Think of where Isaiah Bentz came from to do that. Yeah, he was chasing the plays. So big tackle running downfield. Nice run, though, by McCracken. First positive thing we've seen from this offense. 37 yard run. And Cole McAnaldi back to pass. He has Dunn if he wants him. He throws downfield for Dunn, and it's deflected and almost intercepted. He released it a little bit late and short. And recovering was the Penn's Manor Comets, Justin Marshall. He had him if he throws it earlier, Ward. Yeah, his long passes just haven't connected. They've either been, well, that's the only one that was short. The other one's Second down. well beyond the receiver. That's going to take some time. Second down and 10. One positive for the Wildcats tonight, they've kept their starting quarterback upright and in the game. To give to McCracken, McCracken, beautiful play by Max Hill. Limits him to a yard gain. I think Max Hill would be in contention for player of the week again. <laughs> he was. He was last week and certainly uh, is doing nothing to really harm that opportunity this week. All of this being said, you know Greg Page and his staff will bring back Homer Center. And I just have a feeling down the road they could play again. 
Second down, or third down and nine. Cole McAnally being chased, sacked. Lost the football, McCracken covers it. Max Hill sacks Max Hill Cole sacked. McAnally. Carter Smith also there. Ball's recovered by number 35. Shows you the difference, though, in the speed of Hill. Cole's not quite as fast, obviously, and uh, just got knifed down. He, he can't get away from that pressure. Fourth down and 20. It'll be marked back at the 47-yard line. They need to get to the 26 for a first down, so it's fourth down and 21. Wildcats maybe going to go for it here with 8.50 clock running, and they are. That's uh, surprising. What do you have to lose, I guess, right? Well, yeah, the game's pretty much done. Empty set. Cole McAnally, they're going to set up a screen, and that fools nobody. Mason Bell tackled at the 45-yard line. So they gain two yards on that, and they'll turn it over on down. And Raphael on the stop. That is a fourth down play. Comets will take over on down. First Homer has never had much success with screens. And no. In that case, that just was uh, it's not something their that athleticism. everybody's watching for. You know, you watch for stuff like that. And with Penn's Manor's athleticism, yeah. Mason Bell's not going to run for 22 uh, yards. Uh, so Penn's Manor at their own 45-yard line. Comets on their own 45. Max Hill from the gun. Takes the direct snap. Boots to his right. Looks for running room. Banged out of bounds by Michael Krajosik. The bench is very close to the sideline here. Seem, I don't know if it's just me, but they seem unusually close. Yeah. Gain of six yards. Gain of six. Second and four. Well, it might be the fact that the fence is that close and makes it look close. True. And with the turf, you have the yeah, that's wide cool. paint, the white stripe down the sideline. Penn's Manor, their offense averaged 365 yards rushing coming in. Not sure where they're at right now, but a pretty big total again. And Justin Marshall fakes it to Hill, keeps it himself, and gets Marshall to the Wildcat there. 45 and a first down. On the tackle, Landon Hill and Isaiah three. Bentz. Landon Hill, number 22, Jackson Maroon. A close to a first down, it's enough for a first down. Football mark just inside the 45. the 45, we'll call it the 44 yard line. Ward, if not for that uh, strip by Clevenger of Hill, <laughs> Penn's Manor would be looking at their third straight shot off. Absolutely. Um, the Cats have done nothing really to threaten the end zone. Oh, Penn's Manor and the Comets, you got to give them credit. They have had a great game plan defensively and just total bottled up the Wildcats offense. Under eight minutes to go, Hill under center, wing both ways, and they're going to give on a jet. Corvina through an opening. Corvina breaks a tackle, and Corvina has yardage to the 37-yard line. On the tackle for Homer Center, Romy Dokos and Jackson Arone. We're going to give you the big challenge of interviewing Greg Page. <laughs> Down on the field. Second and two. And uh, Bill Packer, Max Hill, I think you can grab him. That'll be a tale of two cities right there, won't it? Mrs. Belfour, <laughs> seventh grade. That's going back, Dan Snyder. Dan, it uh, was Fletcher. the best of times, and it was the worst of times. <laughs> Second down and two. Split backs behind Max Hill. Penn's Manor hosting River Valley on Cat Country next Friday night. Max Hill going to keep it. Max Hill, Tagliati has him, drags him down just shy of that lead Walker. chain. I want to mention something that Ward mentioned on the pregame show. Of course, from the Homer City area, many people knew Bernie Murray. Murph passed away yesterday afternoon at Indiana Regional Medical Center. His son, Pat, was a quarterback at Homer Center in the 70s and a darn good one. And I believe Bernie, 86 years old, he was a Penguins fan, Steelers fan, Penguins season ticket partner in my group along with Pat. So our condolences to the Murray family. And I mentioned Mike Gauncher. I attended his visitation at the McCabe Roof Funeral Home last Saturday and died at the age of 50, succumbed to cancer. Another great guy. Sympathies to Tricia, Colin, and Abby. The Gauncher family give and no gain on the play, so it's going to be fourth down and short. Clevenger stopped 
Ashton Corbina. And six minutes remaining here in the football game. We'll have a media timeout on the next change of possessions. So Penn's Manor, fourth down and one at the Wildcat 36 yard line. This game's gonna get a lot of replay views. <laughs> not from Center Township or Homer City Borough. But a lot from the Penns Manor School District region. Happy to be here. We thank the Penns Manor School District for their hospitality. Whoa. Give up the middle and Bagley's met and dropped. Bagley's and the Wildcats over. are going to take over after immediate timeout. With 524 remaining in the football game. Penns Manor's in cruise control. They lead Homer Center 26 to 6 on the Renda Media Football Network. At I, I liked the one with the stained glass ship in the front door. You liked the one with the two-car garage. But then we found it, the one. It had a porch swing, a yard for our dog, a room for your office. Sure, it was 95 years old, but when we met with Amy at s and Bank, she mentioned they had been around for over 115 years, and that made me feel better. Because even if we won't be here in 115 years, maybe our grandkids will be. Looking for fun for the entire family? White Township Recreation is now the hub for all of your youth and adult recreation programming. Programming is now open online for registration. White Township Rec offers anything from art classes to gymnastics to bowling to boxing, fitness classes, and much, much more. For more information on public skating, including birthday parties and recreation programs, please visit whitetownshiprec.org. That's whitetownshiprec.org. See you at Public Skate, s and Bank Arena. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. He's going to be dragged down after a short gain. Ward, we have not seen Landon Hill offensively for quite a while. No, he's played defense. I was watching him. He's been out there, so I don't think he's injured. I just think they're just giving him a break. Short gain. They're trying to get some of these other backs some game time. It's a long season. So, you know, you don't throw in the towel. You, you get better. And that's some what the Homer's going to have to do. Changes for Homer Center. Ocean Maritita in there offensively. Also, Javion Jones. Second down and nine. Give to Dunn. Dunn, not a lot of running room. Wildcats get a little bit of a push. Dunn gets over the 40 to the 41. Final score, West Shemokin hangs on, defeats United Valley 14 to 12. Shemokin, Homer Center's next opponent. Friday night at Memorial Field, a week from tonight, 6.15 will be airtime on Renda Digital That's TV. That's a good effort by United Valley. Huh? Cambria Heights now leading River Valley 35 to 14 on our out of town scoreboard. That got away from them. Twin receivers near side. Ocean Maritita in a slot. Flanker on the other side, Will Jones. Krajosik not in the game. And Cole McAnaldi going to hand. Nope, he's going to keep it. And Cole. Uses a stiff arm, gets to the 45, almost the 46. He'll be a yard and a half shy of the first down with 3.50 to play in the football game. So the Wildcats certainly with a lot of work to do. Penn's Manor, they're going to look to keep on rolling next Friday when they host River Valley. Braden Dunn in the backfield. Side card to the left of Cole McAnaldi. Give up the middle, Dunn has a first down, Dunn breaks a tackle, gets to the Penns Manor 49 yard line. On the tackle, Mark Bagley for the Penns Manor Comets as we 
are at the 3.23 mark. Clock momentarily stopped as they move the chains. IUP opens up the season. Seems like forever for them. 5.30 will be airtime. East Stroudsburg on U92.5. 1.30 airtime right here on WCCS. Pitt hosting Tennessee. First down. 10 to go for Homer Center. Cole McAnally looking to pass. Out pattern through the hands of Casey Harper. Thrown a little bit high, but probably one that should have been handled on the coverage for the Penn's Manor Comets. Braden Pytash. Just feel the air is going out of this team. I mean, it's, it's just going through the motions. I don't know how else to put it, but it's just not an exciting, exciting effort here by Homer Center, and it's something I'm not used to seeing. Time out. Time out. Homer Center with 2.57 remaining, remaining in the football game on an Indiana Regional Medical Center High School Sports Night on WCCS Digital Coverage, presented by the Greystone Coral Sportsman's Club 26-6. Fat lady's warming up behind us. Hope she <laughs> has not dipped into Mahel Lupke. It's 26-6. Back after this on the Renda Media Football Network. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. Recently voted Best Landscaping Company in Indiana County, Johnston Nursery Landscaping has been serving the area since 2002 in all phases of landscaping. JNL's primary focus is year-round property maintenance, driveway seal coating, excavation, and wholesale and retail Christmas tree sales. Let JNL take away the hassle of fall leaf cleanup and also help with those fall landscaping projects. It's a great time of year to work on those beautiful home projects. Check them out on Facebook, Johnston Nursery Landscaping. In drug and diamond medical supplies, we come back to action. Fumble on the play, and Homer Center getting up off the bottom of the pile. Isaiah McCracken. So they'll lose a the yard. 240 remaining. Edward, this you said that this is one of Homer Center, one of the worst Homer Center performances you've witnessed in. Quite a while. I, I don't know. You know, there's been other bad ones. But Lake and Air Valley, but that was a yeah, different that's level. A Lake and Air Valley. Uh, situation, but two evenly matched teams being just overwhelmed by the one. It's. We have another timeout. This time, Penn's Manor, I think, is going to make some substitutions. So we'll take one more break with 2.18 remaining in the football game. Guess what? It's 26 6 Comets. Coming back with more to finish things up on the Renda Media Football Network. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We were Former center is Brian Mills after the Penn's Manor timeout. Braden Depp on the tackle along with Brighton Gillen on the stop for Penn's Manor. We've reached the two minute mark. I didn't, I think I forgot, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but our camera person on the far end of the booth near the Homer Center coaching staff, Justly Sharp, track star from Homer Center. Justly, thank you for working with us once again tonight, even though she's officially out of dress code, John, you might have to have a meeting. <laughs> we have Renda Media shirts now. We gave her one before the game, so we're just kidding about that. Here comes Mills again, and Mills dives for the 40-yard line. Depp again hitting him. 35-18 Portage with the lead over Marion Center with eight minutes to go in that game. First Commonwealth Bank post game show coming up right around the corner. 
So it's going to be Penn's Manor ball. First and ten for the Comets on the 41. We'll keep it right here. Marion Center giving a good account of themselves. They've struggled early on, but well, you knew that was a good battle for them. Adam Rising would bring them back, and uh, I will say Greg Page will bring Homer Center back. Oh, uh, yeah. As I said, this is the only game three. You've got a lot of you got a lot of things to adjust. That's for sure. You need Maine's chiropractic, don't you? Well, maybe they do, but I don't. You scratch me up again. Give up the middle. Penn's Manor running with authority. Let's see who has that football team. Dallas Lazier, as both teams have a lot of subs. Let's try to credit some of these Comets that are in there. Uh, 62, uh, Christian Forty still a starter. Uh, 54, Ethan Depp in there as a lineman. 65 out over the football freshman center, Nick O'Neill. Want to give these guys some credit. Depp tight end on the right side. The quarterback is Amin Lieb. He's a sophomore. We're down to one minute to play in the game, and I think they're going to go into victory formation here. Bill Packer, Greg Page, two of the classiest coaches you'd ever want to see. Yeah, that's for Great sure, respect yeah. for one another. And Lieb takes the snap, takes a knee, and they'll have to do that one more time. And we're going to have a final here tonight. Quick aside to Dr. Maines there. I was only being facetious. I wasn't trying to put You said it. your back feels good is what you meant, My right? back's okay. I'm here. I just don't need you cracking it. No, my point was Homer <laughs> Center has a lot of adjusting to do. Well, uh, you're absolutely right. There's another knee and a final score. And a most impressive performance by the Penns Manor Comets who make another huge statement, this one bigger than the first two. They have clearly, clearly established themselves as the team to beat in the Heritage Conference and maybe now the team to beat in District 6. They're going to be a strong contender, no two way. They play like this, and as long as Max Hill stays healthy, they're going to be a force. They lose Max Hill, it's a big different story. Well, there are no two ways about it. They that. really don't have a uh, backup quarterback. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest about it. He is so excellent. I said he's an elite level quarterback, but if he's hurt and he's out, that whole offense starts to sputter. Oh, I there's think. no, well, there's no doubt about that. But they shine tonight. Yes, they and the biggest shining star was number one, Max Hill. Stay with us for our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. Time to be first. First Commonwealth Bank member FDIC. Penn's Manor 26, Homer Center 6. You've been listening on WCCS and watching on Renda Digital TV. We'll launch the postgame show right after this on the Renda Media Football. You won this year's chili cook-off. Our girls played in the softball finals last spring. You're not just another policyholder to us. We remember your name. Hi, Cheryl. He remembered my name. Because it's your name. That's simple human sense. Jeff, Mary, Dan, Sarah. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. 
At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So, there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face-to-face, -face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. Manor five yard line after a 70 yard punt, by the way, from Michael Krajosik and Homer Center. It took two plays, and Landon Hill got Homer Center on the board. And at that time, we thought, well, maybe off and running if you're a Homer Center fan. Paul McAnally under center gives to Hill. Hill sidesteps his way into the end zone for a Homer Center touchdown from a yard out. His eighth of the season, sixth consecutive score overall for Hill for Homer Center. And the Wildcats lead six to nothing. They take advantage of the short field and the strip fumble, and it's six nothing Wildcats. Wow, what a turnaround. All set up by that 70 yard punt. Extra point was partially tipped, hit the upright, and it was 6 0 Homer Center. First play of the second quarter. Penn's Manor had driven down to Homer Center's 10 yard line, but they were faced with a fourth down and five when Max Hill, the star of this game, went to work his first touchdown pass of the season. Fourth down and about four to go for the Comets. They send Corvina in motion, and Hill rolls to his right, looking. They pressure him, he rolls to his left, he dumps it off to Smith, takes it at the 10, five, touchdown, and the Manor Comets. Excellent job by Max Hill, who has his first touchdown pass of the season, and we are knotted up at six as they converted that big fourth down play. Justin Marshall's extra point made it seven to six, and the Comets never look back. They scored again before the end of the half, starting a drive at the Penns Manor 46-yard line after Homer Center had gone for it near midfield and lost yardage. Third and eight, the Comets got a 20-yard run from Max Hill to Homer Center's eight-yard line. Then after a sack, it was a horse collar tackle set up first and goal for Penns Manor at the Wildcat nine-yard line. Motion man, Corvina, Hill, Boots to his right. Wildcats get, get to him. They seal it off. Hill to the five. Hill to the pylon. Touchdown. Untouched. He had an easy trip to the end zone. And the Comets now lead 13 to 6. This is the Max Hill show tonight. He is stealing the show as far as our Hills brothers uh, match up here tonight. They're not brothers, but you get the point. It's 13 6 Penn's man. Justin Marshall added the extra point. We were 14 6 at the half. Penn's Manor then would score on back-to-back -back possessions to start the second half. And they got going, uh, starting at their own 37-yard line, six-play, 63-yard drive. They had a second and 10 from the Wildcat 18-yard line. And Hill rolls to his right, throwing underneath all alone is Corvine at the 15, the 10, stops at the five and into the end zone for a touchdown. Outstanding move by Corvina. He was wide open as Homer Center has been giving up chunks of yardage. They have found seams in this defense, and it is all Penn's Manor. 20 to six over the Homer Center Wildcats as they drive 63 yards. And they weren't done. Homer Center, three possessions in that third quarter, three and out on all three. After a 23-yard Michael Krajosik punt, Penn's Manor starting at their own 43-yard line. And uh, they had 
A play that originated from the 46 yard line when Max Hill went back to work. Booting to his right, Max Hill has running room if he wants it, cuts it up to the 50, to the 45, and a first down, and he's going to take it to the house. He's going to take it 54 yards for a touchdown as the Max Hill show continues to shine here at Pat Corrigan Field, and the Comets are blowing out Homer Center. It's 26-6 with 7.13 to play in the third quarter. Yeah, and it was that kind of night, and it just uh, didn't get any better for Homer Center, and Penn's Manor went conservative, and we ran out this game 26-6 to was the final score as Penn's Manor held Homer Center to under 100 yards, 92 yards of offense, while rolling up 358 of their own, 185 on 19 carries, two touchdowns for Max Hill. He also threw for two other than that. He didn't have a very good night. Congratulations to Max Hill and the Penn's Manor Comets. Quite a performance. They're 3-0. and Homer Center drops to 2-1. and We're going to come back in one minute and have Homer Center head coach Greg Page, actually, we'll start with Bill Packer in 60 seconds. We'll be back with the coach, 26 to 6. Comets win it. We'll continue on the Renda Media Football Network. My name is London, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right, London. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for five area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com and equal opportunity employer. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable. First Commonwealth Bank postgame show. Let's go down to the field. Ward Hilliard standing by with Penn's Manor, 18th year head coach, Billy Packer. Ward? Well, I thank you finally. Uh, we're funny. I got Coach Packer here, and he's all smiles naturally. But uh, what a game plan you had here tonight, Billy. Yeah, you know, uh, we, we knew we, uh, we had a tough game tonight. And, uh, you know, with Greg, uh, he always has those kids ready to go and that. And, uh, you know, we, we just tried to put some pressure on and, uh, you know, try to get some blitzes and try to, you know, we knew we had to stop the run with the, and we couldn't leave Landon get started because that he's such a big kid and uh, he sees holes real fast and he's fast. So uh, I just thought our, our kids, uh, you know, did a nice job controlling their gaps and, and uh, we were blitzing and getting in on them. Yeah, I, I know Bagley got in a number of times. We were wondering if anybody was even blocking him, and he was. We finally saw that they were pulling a guard. He was just coming in behind the guard and making the play. Yeah, you know, we were working all week on that. We were working on him coming down the line. We we thought if we could send him down the line. He wasn't getting blocked, but we could catch him from behind. So uh, it worked for us. Yeah, they, Homer did a pretty good job of bottling up your running backs, but they certainly couldn't bottle up. Max Hill, he's a special player, is he not? Oh, he is. I mean, that's a kid, you know, uh, just does a great job. And that, that's something that you can't coach. I mean, it's just in him. And uh, w what a great job. I mean, they had a rush on him a couple times. It looked like he was going to get like a big loss. And then he uh, breaks it and goes, you know, 60, 70 yards. You know, he, he's a threat all the time. And uh, just what a great athlete. Yeah, and those plays really pick up your tired team. You see the level of play picked up when he makes those big plays. It's it's certainly a a great thing to have. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, uh, the kids see that that picks them up, and you know when you think you're going to have a, uh, a loss and you get big plays like that, that just picks the other kids up and gives us the momentum. 
Well, you got River Valley. I don't know if it's here or not, but uh, it is here uh, next week. And you guys are three and zero, and well on your way, huh? Well, you know, every week's going to be a battle for us. We know that. Uh, uh, we we haven't seen them yet, but you know, uh, we know what a good team they were last year, and. Uh, uh, you know, from what I heard, they were giving Camber Heights a good game there for a while. So, uh, you know, if we're not ready to play, uh, anybody can beat anybody this year, I think. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and also the wait to, to, to get on here. And uh, wish you luck. We'll probably see you down the road. Okay. Thanks, Ward. Thank you, Ward. That's Coach Packard. All right, Ward, thank you very much. We're going to come back with head coach Greg Page in 60 seconds as the Comets defeat the Wildcats in convincing fashion, 26-6, coming back with Coach Page after this on the first Commonwealth Bank postgame show on Renda Media TV and WCCS. <laughs> My name is London, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right, London. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for five area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com and equal opportunity employer. Twenty-six six total domination here at Pat Corrigan Field. Comets out out uh, gain Homer Center three fifty-eight to ninety-two. Ward Hilliard with the difficult job tonight of interviewing head coach Greg Page. We thank him for standing by. Ward, thank you, Mark. And yeah, you know it is. It's not a difficult job because Coach Page is a realist, and he he pretty much told me what he thought. And I'll, I'll let him tell you what he thought after. I'll probably clean it up now since we're on the air. But you know what? The, the simple fact of the matter is we got outplayed and outcoached tonight. Um, and, you know, I told the kids, I know it's a coach's cliche, but that's my responsibility uh, overall. Um, they, they didn't agree. They, they took it. They were good. They took it upon themselves. But, you know, the whole thing about it is Penn's manager just played really, really well. I thought they had a good game plan. Uh, they always do. Uh, they made big plays when they had to. We made mistakes. They didn't make as many mistakes. When you do that, you're going to end up on a 26-6, um, on the bad end of 26-6. Well, I, I thought, uh, you know, you guys did a pretty good job of, of bottling up their running game. But, of course, Max Hill was another story. And uh, I don't know if he, how, how you can answer that. Well, you know, when you get pressure on a kid like that, it's almost like he wants the pressure because then he can scramble and he has open field. Honestly, there are a couple plays that we um, – he made nice runs and we, we did not – we did not pursue and try to tackle uh, the way you're supposed to defensively. That's sad. that's really sad right there. But he deserves a lot of credit. Um, I thought we did play well most of the game defensively, but there was way too many defensive snaps um, for us compared to offensive snaps. And that wears on you, even though it's the same kids for the most part, that wears on you mentally, psychologically. You know, we're on the field playing defense a lot. That means they're controlling the game. Did that physically wear your guys down? We thought the line was going to dominate pretty much, and they did for a while. But uh, playing defense for so long might have tired them out. Yeah, I, I thought we played physical at times. There were a couple big plays they had. When, like I said, the one long touchdown run by Hill that kind of sealed the deal. We, we waved at them. Um, that's, just, that's just not right. I mean, that's just not that's giving up on a play. A couple other plays, they hit us with a, with a wheel pass and a couple out passes, um, and we're just we're not being aggressive coming up and making a play. I always say well, you gotta, you got to use your pads. Um, 
but other times we were physical. Uh, we weren't physical enough and dominant enough offensively. Uh, we really couldn't get anything going. We were very inconsistent, uh, both with our running game and our passing game. So we have a lot of things we got to go back and look at. That'll make uh, this week an interesting week, will it not? You have West Shemokin next week at our place. Uh, what do you know about them? I don't know anything yet. I haven't seen them. I mean, I've heard scores. Uh, John McCullough does a nice job. He has a good staff. His kids play hard. No game's going to be easy, especially the way we played tonight. Um, no game is going to be easy. And I, you know, I don't know what they did tonight, but they're going to be a good football team. Uh, to me, next week, uh, for us, it doesn't matter who we play. We have to focus on us and get better. And if we do those things, everything else on a Friday night, the result will take care of itself. Well, they beat Kevin by two points, <laughs> so it's a break for Kevin. That was good to hear, but uh, they still had, well, Shemokin could still won the ball game. And I, I'll tell you, I think this this team's going to turn around because you guys are coaching them, and that that says a lot. And that's why you were number one, even uh, though you didn't want to be. I should tell you guys to stop doing those polls <laughs> because I think that's the first time we've been picked first, and I hated it. And it's just it's hard on the kids. It's an ex it's an excuse. It's a bad excuse, but these kids have been patted on the back and told them how, told how great they're going to be. They just played a team that only lost two seniors. I knew this team was going to be damn good. So, you know, there's a lot of pressure on these kids because everybody, you know, thinks when you're picked number one that you're better than everybody else and you're just going to walk through people. It doesn't happen. What you're going to do is get their best shot. We got it tonight. We, we ran into a team that really, really was ready and is a good football team. We all knew that. So what do we do from here? I know what we're going to do. We're going to pick we're going to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps if that's still an expression and we're going to get back to work because I told the kids I said I was almost smiling in the post game huddle I said I've been involved in this a long time as an assistant or head coach I've been on many many good times in games like this I've been on some bad ones too you have to forget about it study it move on life's too short it's game three and there's a lot of season left, and I know you guys are going to turn it. So we'll, we'll be looking forward to that next week. Thanks for the time, Coach. We all got to do better. Coaches, players, everybody. And it's, uh, it starts with us. So, you know, that's where, that's where we are right now, and that's, that's where it has to go starting Monday. Thanks for waiting around, Coach. Thank Appreciate it. It's always a good interview. Yeah, back you. to you, Mark. All right. Thank you, Ward Hill. You're down on the field. We're going to come back for a final time on our first Commonwealth Bank post-game show, give you the stats and a look at the out-of-town scoreboard before we turn the page and get ready for week number four of the high school football season. Tonight it was all Penn's Manor, 26-6 over the Homer Center Wildcats. Comets improved to 3-0 and established themselves as the front runner in the Heritage Conference. Wildcats dropped 2-1. We'll look to rebound against West Shimokin next Friday night. Back for a final visit to Pat Corrigan Field after this on the Renda Media Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. This is your state representative, Jim Struzzi, and I'm asking for your vote this November. The last couple of years have been something we could never have imagined, and now we are getting back to normal, and nothing is more normal than Friday night football. I want to wish all our area athletes, band members, cheerleaders, and all who participate the best of luck for a safe, successful, and fun-filled season. These games wouldn't happen without the support of the community, and I will continue to work hard for you and your families in Indiana County. Me and my staff wish you good luck, and I'll be rooting for each and every one of you, and I hope that you'll be rooting for me this November. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season because we care about care. Stadium lights are going out. The bleachers are empty. The reason? No officials. 
When fans are disrespectful to the calls on the field and those who make them. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Plus at Luther Ford, you'll save big during the Ford Summer Supercharged Sales Event. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. I'm Shannon Lipniskis. Hutton Blues Insurance of Indiana is proud to support high school football. I'm Jay Blues. You can't beat football season. And when it comes to your insurance needs, you won't beat the service we provide at Hutton Blues Insurance. Our family business has served Indiana and the surrounding counties for more than three decades. Once you do business with Hutton Blues Insurance, we'll make you a customer for life. So best of luck area teams from your friends at Hutton Blues Insurance in Indiana. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish... Field Ward has made the climb back up into the booth and will activate his microphone. Penn's Manor activated Max Hill tonight, didn't they? Oh, wow, what a performance. So, you know, I told Billy, uh, I said, you know, he reminds me so much of Danny Ference, and Billy just nodded his head and says, yeah, he's, he's got all this good. You can't coach that stuff. He's just that talented. And just for their sake, you got to hope he doesn't get hurt because yep. he makes that team go. Let's give you Homer Center stats, and it won't take long. They had just 92 yards of offense in this game. Landon Hill, who didn't play much offensively in the second half, 11 carries, 25 yards. Braden Dunn, 5 carries, 8 yards. Cole McAnulty, 6 carries, 3 yards. Isaiah McCracken, maybe the lone bright spot offensively. The sophomore, 3 carries for 42 yards. Showed a little bit of girth yeah. and yeah, he... power. Uh, Mills, 2 carries for 9 yards. Cole McAnulty in this game, 3 for 15 for 8 yards and an interception. Yeah, he missed some some deep balls uh, again. You know, you got to believe that's part of coming back and trying to work the rust off. But uh, yeah, I, otherwise they really had no passing offense. Cole McAnulty last year, he is capable. He threw for um, let's see, 1,228 yards. Yeah, he, he, so he throw the injuries, ball. Uh, rust. Uh, I'm sure he's going to be better moving forward. For Penn's Manor, Penn's, uh, Max Hill can't be much better. 19 carries, 185 yards, two touchdowns, one 54-yarder. Through the air, Penn's Manor got their passing game going tonight with 106 yards passing. He was 8 of 13 for uh, with two touchdown passes. Carter Smith, uh, one attempt, he completed it for 26 yards. They definitely found some holes in Homer Center secondary. Yeah, it, it, uh, Hill distributed the ball very well. Got it around. A lot of little short passes, the things that we think Homer might be wanting to look at this week. So total yardage, Penn's Manor ran 59 plays, 358 yards. Homer Center, 42 plays, 92 yards, barely over Jeez. two yards of play. Yeah, I, and you heard me at it. Tell the coach, I said, that's probably as bad as I've seen your team play in a long time. He says, it, it is. And he was not happy, and uh, but he's very practical about it. He says, hey, it happens. we got to get back at it. On the out-of-town scoreboard, Portage is now 2-1. and one. They defeated Marion Center. The Stingers dropped to 0-3, 35-18 the final score. West Shemokin improves to 2-1. and one. United Valley now 0-3 after a 14-12 Wolves victory over the Lions. Cambria Heights, it was tight for a while. They pulled away from River Valley, uh, outscoring them in the second half, 14-0 on their way to a 35-14 victory. Northern Cambria, tight at halftime. Ward, not so tight at the end of the game. It was 13-6 at the break, 33-6 
final score. Colts with a huge second half. Indiana, we were told they were down by eight. I think 22-14, if that score was accurate. They won by a point. Michael Burdick confirmed it. 23-22 wow. over Shady Side Academy. So that's going to do it. Penns Manor will host the River Valley Panthers right here at Pat Corrigan Field. 6.30 will be airtime with Jake Slobotnik and also Chuck Clark on Cat Country 106.3. We'll be back at the friendly confines of Memorial Field when the West Shimokan Wolves come to Homer City next Friday night and the Wildcats will look to bounce back. Ward, any final comments on this one? No, I, I have a lot of faith in the coaching staff and certainly Coach Page. You know, a lot of experience there. This ain't the first time this has happened, and, and they got a lot of buttons to fix or push, I should say, to get this thing turned around, but they're going to do it. All right. Well, that's going to do it. We want to thank our whole crew, our statistician, Jerry Rossi, outstanding work as always, our spotter in the booth, Dennis Mester. Thank you, Dennis, for doing your great uh, work as well. Back at 9th and Philadelphia Streets, our Executive producer of Wildcat Sports, Michael Burdig on the radio side. Don't say his executive. Yeah. Our video producer, John <laughs> Smathers, right behind us doing a great job. The replays are fantastic, well, aren't they? It's, it, it's, it's just, that's just great. I mean, you miss a call and you, you can see it again. and Wow, it, it's just something else. I look back at John and a viewer in Australia and a viewer, viewer in Greece. How about that? And we can't forget, on the camera, Justly Sharp senior at Homer Center who is uh, working with us a lot, track, track star, <clears throat> excuse me, must be those Holupki. Uh, <laughs> we thank Justly, she does a great job. And Ward, finally, big thank you to the Penns Manor School District, the whole crew here. Yeah, it's always they good They treat out us here. fabulously, don't they? Hey, man, it's always nice out here. All right, well, that does it as we are beyond 10 o'clock again here as Penns Manor wins it, and they gave up the first points of the game, but, boy, they bounced back in a big way and dominated this football game. They earned everything they got here tonight, led by Max Hill. Our final score, Mark Burdick reminding you that it was Penns Manor 26 and the Homer Center Wildcats 6 until we talk to you next Friday night from Memorial Field from Kenwood and Penns Manor High School. Good night, everybody. Business happens here and here and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. When your vehicle needs tended to, take it to Baroni's Auto Care. Baroni's Auto Care inspects, does minor repairs including brakes and exhausts, as well as oil changes and tune-ups. And if you're looking for tires, Baroni's Auto Care sells all brands. Baroni's Auto Care is currently accepting new customers. So when your vehicle needs inspected or repaired, take it to Baroni's Auto Care right off Route 56. Look for the sign in Brush Valley. The Indiana County Technology Center is now accepting enrollment in our adult education programs. The ICTC's adult education programs offer in-demand post-secondary programs tailored to empower student success. From cosmetology to welding and practical nursing, the ICTC has a program for everyone. Indiana County Technology Center, empowering tomorrow's workforce. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. Are you thinking about getting vaccinated? Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about the COVID-19 vaccine. The Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania would also like to remind you that COVID-19 vaccines are available for children as young as six months. Talk to your doctor, your child's pediatrician, or your pharmacist if you have questions. You can also learn more by visiting vaccines.gov. That's vaccines.gov. Message made possible by the Health Initiative for Rural Pennsylvania. 
At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall, located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, features an air-conditioned banquet room that comfortably seats 200, a beverage bar, a stage and refurbished hardwood dance floor, and a brand new kitchen that is caterer-friendly. The Twin Cities Event Hall is perfect for weddings, anniversary parties, or any occasion. The Twin Cities Event Hall is now accepting bookings located off Route 119 in Grayston on Neal Road. Find them on Facebook or call 724-541-3683.